Good morning, good day, and good evening. Welcome to episode 155, I want to say. Yeah, that's probably right. Tech of a T. Welcome back to the show. Today we have a new guest. Welcome to the show. I actually don't know how to say your name. I've never heard you say, is it Trafton? Trafferton? Trafferton. Trafferton. Right, welcome to the show. How's it going? If you're going to read the actual katakana that I showed at the beginning of the video, it would be like, and I had to take a lot of liberties because I actually don't know as much Japanese as people like to think I know. It's like, Turafotino, or something like that. It's something, Tano? I think it's Tano. But it's, yeah, I, I don't know a lot of much about Japanese. I just, I do know some characters, like if you show them to me, mm -hmm. but it's probably because I saw an anime and I recognized the first character and I'm like, oh, I know what that mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. Like, the, like, I saw Code Geass, so it's like, oh, so I know Ko, I know what Ko looks like, and then it ends right there. <laughs> yeah, I I have been, I, I don't want to say studying, studying is not the correct word, um, loosely entertaining the idea of learning Japanese for like the past, I don't know, year or two. I've been doing some kanji stuff every so often, slowly making progress, but there is absolutely no world where I'll describe what I know as good or functional. I know enough where, like, I can get the gist of what's going on, but if you expect me to reply in a conversation, there is no chance that's happening. Well, one interesting thing is, I, I it's happened twice, I think. There was someone actually started asking me, like, questions, and then, like, but I could tell they knew French. So mm -hmm. I responded half, made half of my response in French and half my response in English. And they were like, oh my gosh, you know, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. And I'm like, great. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I do know a little bit of French. I know a little mm -hmm. bit of Spanish. I know, no, I know more French, English and French. I know mm -hmm. Spanish just a little bit and uh, Japanese and Chinese. <laughs> you need to go and start one of the, uh, the polyglot channels. They do so well on YouTube. Oh, do they? Oh, do they really? They, they, no, they're going to, no, those people, they sell, they're like parasocial relationships selling their lives. Uh -huh. Like I'm it's, you know, it's true. It's like, they just like, look at me, go out to some supermarket in Japan. And it's like, you're, you're asking to get jumped. Like, let, let's <laughs> right? like, it's true. Like, have you ever wondered like all those, those, those like Twitch streamers or like YouTube live streamers who mm. like, they're like, look at me clean my house today or whatever. It's like, that's like, or like, you know, some, this is a funny one. Mm. I won't say who, um, I was watching a, I was watching someone and she looks out her window and she's like, why are they capturing an, like an animal like what? outside of my house? But the problem is because she said that. If you looked up that animal that they said they were capturing, you could find out exactly where she lived. Oh, and like, there are very God. few like people who like take this into account. Like, mm -hmm. I, like there are some people. Like, for example, no, I, I shouldn't say it. I would that would come off as toxic. I don't want to say it. Just, <laughs> Wait, you mean are... this start hasn't already been toxic? No, doxing. Like, oh, doxing. I think it's toxic. Yeah, no, it's, definitely. It's been... Okay, it's okay. Just toxing. This is there weren't there weren't toxic people, mm -hmm. but like if you just think about like the situation, like you can figure out like exactly where someone is. Well, like, if you consider, um, what was it? Uh, he cannot divide us. Is that what? It was? You cannot divide Ooh. us. Whatever it was called back when uh, people were finding where this stupid flag was located based on oh flight is this patterns. the shia labeouf yeah yeah, oh, yeah 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 people were working um, out what the flag was based on flight patterns don't show yeah. anything in your life unless you want people to find it because there are some absolute crazy people out there who will find you well that's how i feel about who is privacy every day <laughs> but it's okay when i when i sorry so you have a domain name you can relate to this i don't know yes. where you bought yours um i won't i won't pry if you if you're okay, um, no, if you're I, okay, I, you can tell me. I think I've if you mentioned it before. I buy my stuff from Namecheap. From Namecheap, okay. Actually, I buy my stuff off of Namecheap too. That's not yeah. a secret because you can just look at the who is information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the things that um, I did have to do. And this mm. is one thing I'd recommend everyone do if you buy a domain. Is uh, I went on a fa my yearly family vacation mm. uh, to, to to see my children. But what you do is you you i registered in the hotel that i was staying in uh-huh and using the hotel internet 
And then what you do is you put in your address as the hotel you're staying in, because technically what they're asking you is, where did you, where do you live? So I said, oh, I live in this hotel because I was living in that hotel. Right. I lived in that hotel for a week. So that's what I did. And that's the address that's on my, that's on my <laughs> thing. If it ever does get revealed. That's because actually not a bad idea. I had never thought of that. Because there are all sorts of people who live in hotels because they've, I don't know, they have temporary housing. Sure, sure. They lost their, like their home got destroyed or something and they're waiting for it to get fixed. There's all sorts of reasons why people could be living in a hotel. Mm -hmm. There is, I don't know how there are domains out there who, like where they don't have basic privacy. I, I've found some domains doing some sketchy things and it just has all of their information. Every single service includes who is privacy. There's usually like a, a lot of them don't even charge That is not for true. It. We have, we've had, had to, my, I have had to help people who okay. have bought their domains from some okay, more sketchy okay. providers. Okay. Most or of them not even sketchy ones. providers, but like formerly like the big providers mm. here in the U S like okay, okay. the worst offender that I've encountered so far was it used to be GoDaddy, but GoDaddy has now made it so you don't have to pay for it anymore. They try to make that a selling point because they're like, wow, you don't have to pay for it anymore. It's like, guys, you 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 scumbags charged everyone for like years mm -hmm. and now you're thinking it's okay? No, get out of here. But the worst one I've encountered so far was aplus.net. Aplus.net. Trying to, oh, you've never heard of them? No, Try, I can, they are like the most obscure domain provider I ever heard of. And when I was first approached, I'm like, who are these people? So I looked into these people and their website looks like it was made a million years ago. Their web portal is broken on like modern web browsers. And when you request your ETP code to transfer your domain, they just send you your password instead of the actual ETP code. So you have to call support. You get on the phone, you call support, you wait an hour. And then when they, when on the other end of the call, the person's like, okay, so did you, did you try doing it through the website? We'll do it again for you. And I'm like, no, give me the real code, you idiot. So they give you the, then I wait seven days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to wait a week. They give me the code and then it's finally the random gibberish. Great. Thank you. Get out of my life. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm, I'm grateful that I've never had to use them, but it's just people got roped into it like in 2009 when they first got started ish around 2009 2010 they kept it up till 2015 and then it's just it was just too entrenched in their lives well I, okay no i guess that's fair i hadn't really gotten involved in having my own website until like the past couple of years so i didn't know what it was like in the past but nowadays there is unless you're doing some like real sketchy stuff most of the providers that you should care about, I didn't know about GoDaddy charging you for it. Most of the sensible ones should have it there. And if it doesn't, please find someone else. Do not have a domain without who is privacy. It's very, like, it's such a... St Unless you're going to use fake information. Like, whatever. Go ahead. No, even if you use fake information because there are... Even though technically mm -hmm. you are not protected if you use a fake name because that gives them the right to take your domain away from you because you're not complying with ICANN That's fair. regulation. That's fair. But if you're doing so, something like, you sketchy do like, you know, name. I don't know, selling Coke or something, like, I don't think you care. <laughs> oh, that's what people use Wicker for. <laughs> yeah, well. I, I'm serious. Like, I, there used to be, like, I don't know if it's still around, but mm. there, was a, there was there was a bunch of, like, Wic Wicker, for some reason, Wicker. Mm -hmm. And like Wicker is like, I'm pretty sure it's paywalled off the wazoo now. Oh, you've never heard of it. It's, it was like the first like encrypted messaging service at the time. Right. And oh, no. Okay. Allegedly, yeah, 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 yeah. allegedly, um, Nico Sells was approached by the FBI who asked, Hey, could you give us a backdoor pretty please? And I don't know if this was real or not. Um, but like, that was like a story that like flew around around like 2014 ish or whenever they first got started. And I was like, oh, that's really weird. That's why if you watch earlier episodes of Mr. Robot, they do mm. use Wicker because that was the gold standard for the time period. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. first season of Mr. Robot uses Wicker because that was the gold standard for the time period. Those people did their research. Like, yeah. like right down to like the kinds of phones that mm. like Elliot and Darlene use in the show are real phones people use from the time period. They're using like next they're using Nexus phones because that's what People would have used, like, it was like a Nexus 5 or whatever. I People would have used back then. I haven't finished Mr. Robot yet. I still have the last season to watch. But from what I've seen, it's a really good... Like, I, I, 
This is a show that if you've not watched, you really need to go and do so. Like, if you are sick of seeing just bullshit hacking in... Like, it's... Okay, the, as much as I love the nonsense hacking you'll see in, like, you know, CSI or whatever, where it's, like, you know, fucking two people on the same keyboard smashing random keys, as fun as that is, if you want to see, like, a realistic portrayal of it, obviously, you know, how would you say it, like... Realistic and entertaining. Yeah, yeah. It's not... <laughs> because well, yeah, it could be hacking fully realistic. nonsense in Mr. Robot is stuff like, you know dot slash blank dot mm. sh and then they do a thing yeah yeah, or, yeah like the funniest one was like i think it was like darlene threatening to delete something off of a computer and mm. it's literally just like python like thing dot py i'm like oh that's but cute. the other <laughs> thing it does really well is there's a lot of social engineering it's not just we are breaking computing systems it's like how do we manipulate people to you know give us what we want like the first, literally the first episode was the first episode with um, where it was back. Was it the first episode where he got the dog, or was that a little bit later? The first episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, so that was you. You call the phone and you get the guy. You get his phone. And you're like, he's like, no way. This guy's too old to have <laughs> to have a good password. And then yeah, we'll wait till people get to me. <laughs> yeah, I can give people. Hard Actually, I know people much older. There are people on the internet who are much older than me. Mm. who probably have just as strong passwords because they use password managers. So it's well, not... I don't think it's a barrier thing. It's just, like, an age barrier thing. It is literally just, like, you need to, like... just need to do it. I think it's, it's really also, easy. It, it's just a knowledge thing. Like, there's a lot of people who just don't know how bad their passwords are and how bad it is to have the same password on every service. Like, I... I have had to convince people in my personal life to stop using, you know, six character passwords that are the same thing on every service. The only time they change it is when there is, like, some random service where they actually have basic password rules. If you are using a six-character password, just don't even... <laughs> just don't even... Like, a six-character password with only lowercase letters... No, even if you have a ten-character well, ten password, you're doomed. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the world we live in today. And it's Just, like, but do you want to know a password thing I think everyone overlooks? Mm -hmm. It's your phone. Most people don't have good phone passwords. And it's like, even if you're on yeah. Android and you have the pattern unlock, the pattern unlock is arguably worse <laughs> because there's less items of variability. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the there are digital forensics people who actually, uh, what they do is they scan, uh, like, with thermal scanners, mm -hmm. your phone to look at, like, where your finger has been the most. To be fair, you don't even have to do that because most of the time people don't clean their screens. You can just look at the phone oh, like, ah, well, there's that well, too. Okay, that's the pattern. <laughs> or if your phone, like my phone, it has a bit of damage that sort of indicates where the pattern is. Um, you know, wait, did that just move. Maybe I'm just saying shit. Um, yeah, but it, I think the cap of Android, mm. there's actually a reason for this. The cap is 16 characters. I believe the cap is lifted if you use one of those um, Google ROMs or mm. the ungoogled Android ROMs like Calyx OS or Graphene OS. Yep. The, they lift the limit to 40, and I think 40 is also the limit that's on Apple's phones. Mm. Um, I have not tried the upper ceiling, although my password for my phone is definitely up there. <laughs> um, is... 16, 16 the reason why they do 16 mm. is because it's partially because of the default and android of like google's phones mm -hmm. because google's phones have an encryption engine which prevents software from just guessing passwords on mass which apple doesn't have so but there's it's a it's a trade-off right like apple's trade apple the trade-off that apple makes is in exchange for not having that like their phones are substantially better protected from a boot a boot standpoint mm -hmm. They, it's a willful trade-off. Hmm. There are many things in the world that are like this. They like, you'd say, well, why don't they do that? It's ability. There's a will. It's a willful trade-off because they know they're doing it. It's like what happened with lockdown mode. Lockdown mode won't protect will protect you from an attack, but it makes you incredibly not private on the internet because so few people actually turn it on because of the big spooky warning that Apple shows you when you open it on your phone. Lockdown mode being. It's a high security mode that's in Apple's products. And uh -huh. um, so it's on Mac OS Ventura and it's also on I iOS and iPad OS. I don't know if it exists on watch OS, mm -hmm. but it is, what it does is it has, it 
removes just in time compilation of JavaScript, prevents okay. people from calling, like of like adding you on FaceTime or calling you unless you invite them first. And then it also like prevents all non image attachments from being sent through iMessage. Oh, and wow. It's, it's pretty, pretty substantial. And like Android doesn't quite have something to match it because even like the hardening of hardening like an Android device too is really just like, don't use anything that isn't a Google phone. <laughs> it's kind of true. Like there's all sorts of pitfalls with all of the other Android phones. Like, I mean, like n never mind this, you know, the stuff like with Huawei where the Polish government accused them of like backdooring their phones, although they're the proof they provided was not exactly helpful <laughs> let's put it that way it was very hard to substantiate what 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 they were actually saying of that report mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but at least huawei is still like huawei phones also don't have like the same kind of boot security and other bonus things within their custom roms that google do, their roms that google does mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even if you use like especially if you use like one of the custom android roms like graphene os or um Divest OS. I mean, Divest OS doesn't even work on newer Pixel phones, I don't think, but um, I don't know why, but it just doesn't. I know Graphene does. And Graphene still supports like the Pixel 2, but you still shouldn't be using a Pixel 2 today, but whatever. Um, I have no idea how we got to this topic. Yeah, I don't know either. I think it was just passwords. You got me talking. This is. Yeah, you, look, this is... The, the more that you talk, the less that I talk, and that's good for me. Oh, it's like the Joe Rogan and Snowden situation where he just, I have never seen Joe Rogan shut up in my life. And like, he let Snowden prattle on for like 40 minutes. And I'm like, wow. There's, I look, have... you don't want to interrupt Snowden. Just let him go. He's, whatever he's going to say is far more important than any of the additional comments you can make. Just go, enjoy. I, I mean, I... I, I silenced his Twitter because I'm just like too much of this is just not helpful. So I was just like, I mean, also he's been out of the game for a long time. That's mm -hmm. another thing. I think. I mean, because also like if you, I didn't download all of it. I did debate about down. I think I did download it at one point mm -hmm. when it first came out. Was the when um, the Guardian and the EFF and a pro look uh, the Guardian the EFF. I know had it, but I got it from the EFF. Was the original Snowden leaks? It was like 182. Yeah, it was like a hundred. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was like 182 gigabytes of like PowerPoints, <laughs> PDFs. Like he downloaded. He had like the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like it was. It was so. I, I don't know how to describe. It. it was just. But I didn't read all of them. I did read a lot of it. But it, it is very. It's very enlightening. When did that even? Happen? I mean, the important ones are the stuff that everyone throws around today Snowden. in the news. Like, I don't know, like, was it, forget wait, was like, it really some like of the major ones. Like, I remember one of them at the time, which was incredibly, like, discar disconcerting, was mm. they were, like, backdooring the pipelines that Google was using to get their internet to spy on all of Google's <laughs> internet traffic. And, right. like, Google <laughs> changed the architecture of their of their networks because, because of that. <laughs> like... And then there was also like an AT&T building, which they were using to spy on the AT&T devices of everyone in like Chicago, which that, I, I was in Chicago. I don't remember. It was some American city, mm -hmm. but that was also a big deal at the time. I, the, when this, the, the Snowden leaks happened when I was too young to really be caring about what was, uh what was it's going like on in the world. 2013-ish. Yeah, because like, I... 2014 was when it really took off, when he was, like, hell... trying to get, like, amnesty from Hong Kong and Russia. Because I was six, 15, 16 at the time, so I was playing video games or something, I don't know, not paying attention to what was happening with Snowden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny, I feel like, um, is that, I feel like it's a lot of kids these days, they're all playing video games, even the people... They're all playing video games. I don't get it. I just don't get it. They're fun to play every now and then, but I just don't have time a lot of times. Oh, are we going to go on a big rant about why video games are bad? Like you were doing oh, before the show started? We, I totally could, but I actually don't have a lot to say on that matter. 
Well, I look, I'm not one of those gaming YouTubers who can just get on like a Twitch stream or a YouTube video and just rattle, prattle off like hot takes on video games. I got none of that. In fact, whenever I show a video game on screen, mm -hmm. either I've played it or I have never touched that game in my life. Usually, like if I've played it, that means you it's a great achievement or it's an, a game that Epic gave me for free and I didn't have a cough up money for, which is also also a thing. Well, I did. I, they, I, I did yeah, see the games of, I've shown oh, are like Arkham Knight, mm -hmm. which Epic gave for free. Tomb Raider, I think, has that video come out? No, Tomb Raider hasn't come out yet. That video hasn't even out yet. Oops. But Tomb Raider, um, Tomb Raider, yeah, I did start and then I never continued. <laughs> yes, yeah, I stopped at like the first campfire. I'm like, great. And then I just turned the game off. I actually did obligatory run the benchmark mm -hmm. because that's of course you of course you do. Oh, absolutely. Got to run the benchmark with Mango HUD and just say, uh huh, mm -hmm. okay, sixty frames per second on a twenty twelve game or whatever. Great. <laughs> I did see you had a video on our uh, Pokemon Ranger on your channel though. Oh yeah, that's that was, a good game. That was rough. That was rough. <laughs> that, that was rough. It I didn't watch rough. the entire the, like, thing. I, it made me realize I gave up after the two Ludicolos in that stupid city because what happens is the they overlay their attacks on top of each other and you can't flee unless they're both in that little bubble. So you basically <laughs> have to just black out. So clearly, it's, Pokemon games are clearly well designed, guys. It's never, been a very long a time since I played Pokemon Ranger. I I do remember enjoying it though. There was also the struggle of like I didn't change my cursor in RetroArch. So because uh -huh. I didn't change my cursor, it was white on top of white, especially in that city and in yep. the desert area with the ride on. You can't actually, like, do anything. <laughs> yeah. This is back when I thought I could edit videos, like gaming videos, and I'm mm -hmm. like, and it's like, literally no one cares. You it's just of... too much. Yeah, I... This is why I just wanted to experiment with it because I was like, I have a drawing tablet. Mm -hmm. What kind of poke... What kind of, like game on the nintendo ds like required a stylus of people and i that really got me digging because i'm like i can't think of one uh, like I, mystery dungeon didn't require one the world like, ends with you mario kart didn't either because you could just use like the deep the game pad mm -hmm. in fact i would say mario kart didn't let you use it at all except to click through the menus <laughs> yeah that sounds so, about right yeah the only so, two i can then, really like, think call of duty, uh... yeah call of duty ain't using the stylus <laughs> wait was there yeah, a call, call of duty, duty release on the ds, the DS. Yeah, Wait, I, I think everyone forgets that one. Call of Duty was on the DS. Oh, I should tell you about how I actually know about this. Uh -huh. um, at a raffle at work, I won a Nintendo DS. <laughs> what the fuck? They just entered all of us into a like a charity raffle. Uh -huh. And I won a Nintendo DS. And I'm like, what is this? I've never owned this in my life. <laughs> so I actually got involved. And Give I away like, oh, I guess. So I started with Pokemon Diamond. Uh-huh. And Good start. It, it just it just took off from there. Although Pokemon Dime Pokemon, I'm now gotten grown incredibly frustrated with in life. <laughs> no, uh, I I would argue I was just as frustrated about it then because I'm like, why do I have to buy the same game twice? Only only Pokemon can get away of doing that. Well, no. To be fair, you have to buy the same game three in the past three times because you had you had like. Ruby, Sapphire, and then you had the third release, where it is basically the expansion pack. That's the that's oh, the like, funnier. Oh, you of mean Pokemon. like the platinum emerald yeah, yeah. kind of deal? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah platinum's okay. the same. Yeah, I did actually get a hold of um, emeralds because mm. I got it from a GameStop, you know, like because it was you know just a million years old and yeah, yeah. they were still selling them. So I was like, I got it for ten bucks. I'm like, okay. wow, you bought it at a normal price, not retro game prices. Lovely. Yeah, not retro game prices. A, mir a miracle. <laughs> Today you couldn't do that with Pokemon. No, I mean Ooh. you probably could. GameStop is probably has seen better days. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. How is EB Games in Australia? I meant I need to ask. What uh, what do they do over there? I hear stories about them, but I hear it's just as bad as GameStop. What sort of stories do you hear? Like people are miserable working there. That's yeah. about it. Okay. Yeah, that no, I that's mean, fair. But, yeah. But people are miserable working at GameStop too, so that doesn't really say much really. I mean any retail position everyone I know has like I did when I was your age, I would worked in I did. Oh, don't ever get involved in something like this. Any you, anyone younger than me, do not get involved in this. It was supermarket distribution management. Don't ever get involved in that. 
because what they have you do is they have you drive around to all sorts of random supermarkets and you think they would make it so, oh, you just go to a cluster of supermarkets in an area. No, they just literally just send you to random places. Like one day, like you're in one state, the next day you cross the border of the state and go to a different one. Like that's, this is the kind of like randomness mm -hmm. that they do. And and if people wonder, like, hey, why is the supply chain so bad? I'm like, I would argue this is one of the big reasons. I don't know if there's actually some sort of logistic reasons behind it because I had access to all the sales numbers, mm -hmm. but they never gave me access to any of, like, the routes or whatever. I did have only partial access to the routes of the people who worked in our area. Mm -hmm. um, um, but going back to the EV game thing. Um, sure. If you, well, you know, it's the same. It's the same with GameStop, where if you want to get absolutely no money for your games, go and trade them in. Give them twenty games, you'll get five dollars, maybe. You know, nonsense like that. Okay. Pretty much everything that's wrong with GameStop is also wrong with EB Games. It's just a different name, and you can just get. They did it. It wasn't online. a meme stock. It was, yeah. I oh that was such a dumb time on the internet, man. I was just laughing at all the people losing their money from a distance. You know, yeah. if um, if that whole thing encouraged me, one thing it mm. was the after all of that happened, it was the Michael Reeves video about him getting his fish to buy stocks. I was like, maybe I should I should do that. I'm I'll write it. I'll make a video on it one day on how to randomly how to access one of those stock APIs and get JQ to pull a random stock every day that's what i need to do i wonder uh, if there's actually something in yahoo no yahoo i think actually got rid of their ap their public api so you can't actually use yahoo for this kind of information anymore and they're like because of course like why would you make it free when all of these other brokers make you pay for it mm -hmm. um like in here in the us like fidelity makes you pay for access to their um stock api and i think bank of america and chase do too mm -hmm. so uh, i've never even considered looking at the apis for them <laughs> uh yeah because someone i know who i had switched to links a long time ago he had uh -huh. asked me like how do i get access to fidelity's uh, like <clears throat> windows program to do it i'm like <clears throat> oh shoot i don't <clears throat> i don't have a good answer for this and his computer is not good enough to run it anyway if even if it was running windows 10 or 11 it, it wouldn't be good enough to run it it's like a four gigabyte ram like intel i3 from like 2011 no uh, uh you're not going to be able to run the stock program anyway they in fact i'm pretty sure a lot of these stock programs are designed to be like multi-monitor supported so like that makes sense so people can look at like all sorts of like real-time graphs yeah so they like, can make themselves seem really important by looking at 10 graphs at the same time they probably don't understand Yeah, it's like the linux users who rice their desktop and then <laughs> they just have like unix porn screenshots just on mass like on on their computer just to break or like they make their com or no they're the kde user who has like the ten thousand activities where they can just switch it like look now it's windows now it's mac now it looks like a tiling window manager and then just keep doing that and it's like okay I people okay. <laughs> people occasionally ask me like, "Hey, Brody, can you share your awesome WM rice?" Isn't my, it on your GitHub? <laughs> well, yes, but also my my rice is literally the default config with like three lines of tweaking. <laughs> okay, all right. It's better than my crummy sway config on on a computer no one's ever seen before. <laughs> I frequently mention that computer too. Um, mm -hmm. It's um, I actually have my my current laptop is not good. I I had bought it on an impulse, at at a Walmart of all places. That was a Walmart. No, it was a That's Best, best Buy. Compute. So other place of not people wearing better. blue polo shirts. Uh, it was it's the Asus E four hundred three NA. Yes, I had to actually look this up. And no, it doesn't receive uh power through the SD card port. I tested that one too. And then I also opened up the lid to unplug the webcam and microphone because even if it was working, <laughs> it, the camera, the, qual the quality is awful. <laughs> Great value, lightweight aluminum design, good port. But it selection. is truly a really Sharp good like, display. A good uh, notebook. It's basically mm. <clears> like <throat> imagine a Chromebook, uh -huh. but imagine it came with Windows 10 instead. That's a slight upgrade. So that's arguably a slight oh, upgrade, but of course I blasted, I blasted Windows 10 off of it and just coughed up the Microsoft tax. Why does it look and, like a MacBook Pro from 2012? Uh, it probably doesn't because it's probably also aluminum. Apple's computers were also 
using that kind of color of aluminum back but then. Yeah, too. just the picture I saw makes it seem... It looks like one of the old thick bezel MacBook Pros. Oh, the bezels are... They are, they are pretty thick. They are pretty thick. <laughs> um, but if recommendation, which you can mm. do, and it is actually able to be done, if you actually own this computer, you can if you you can take a nail file, pry open the top part of in front. If you look at the picture, uh -huh. pry open the top part of the screen, the frame around the screen. Uh -huh. And if you pry off the frame behind the screen, underneath that is the webcam and microphone, and it's all one module. They do sure. have to save money, so just un you can just unplug it. <laughs> Just as a comfortable little reminder, you can actually do that. On um, this is it, and this isn't great. Thankfully, I did do this once with a Dell XPS 15, I think, for someone. Which uh, you actually have to get a heating pad to like open that thing up, so you can, so you can remove the microphone and webcam. It's so annoying. <laughs> like the pain of caring about your security, your privacy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I did more than like, hey, you know, you're gonna lose your webcam. And then the pandemic happened, and then I just made, I ended up looking like a prophet. <laughs> See, this is why I like. But then my... they just got an external <clears throat> camera, so you know. I I do everything it. on my desktop, and if I don't want my camera or webcam on, I just literally like take the power away, unless you can somehow manage to bring the power back without you through code. Good luck with that. But uh, you know, you got to turn the 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 switch on at the wall. It's not gonna happen. I'm good. I don't need cover anything. <laughs> I yeah. sleep with a camera in my room. It's just not powered by anything. So good luck. What I do is um, I have a. I've talked about this on Mastodon Twitter. Mm. I have a. I have a PF Sense firewall, and oh my gosh, I've tried Open Sense. I legitimately have tried, but it misconfigures my interfaces, and so it never gets to touch the internet at all. <laughs> and I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but it's funny. PF Sense just works. It just. It always gets my configuration correct. Mm -hmm. um, but I did find out my issue was PF blocker mm -hmm. on some updates, which is like, oh, think of it like Pi hole, but for PF sense. Mm -hmm. What happens is Pi, it's so intrusive on DNS, it will just eat up every year. If you set up a sink, a VPN sinkhole, it will eat up the sinkhole so you can't connect to the internet. <laughs> and my backups have PF blocker in them. So that's why my, back, my backups were hosed. So mm -hmm. I couldn't. You, that's why my me restoring my backups didn't do anything. So yeah, you have to. So I did have to rebuild my configuration again from scratch, which was annoying. But I don't do much with it aside from it being a sinkhole. And all right, I'll tell you a story about this firewall too. I had bought this just be in the September of 2019, just before mm -hmm. um, the pandemic. And then when they sent all of us home, now all of a sudden, oh, I now have a, a laptop with me which mm -hmm. could potentially access my home IP address and give the stalkerware that my company uses access to where I live. Oh, that sounds like a really bad idea. And I had already set all of this up six months in advance. So I'm like, all right, let's put it to the test. So I had to activate the other ports on it so it can connect to this thing. It's a little weird because when you use OpenVPN or WireGuard, what you're, well, you can't use WireGuard. Well, you can now. I haven't tried it though because P NetGate has been really dumb. In fact, I think Jason Donaldson was the original creator of WireGuard. Well, he owns a trademark at least. He got in a spite with uh, a dispute with Net with Net with um what's what's it called? Uh, NetBlue or whatever they're called. The com not NetBlue. He's the guy who made Fire Jail. Um, <laughs> uh, NetGate. He got in the dispute with NetGate because. Mm -hmm. They were being very difficult about implementing WireGuard into PFSense, even though OpenSense had already implemented it. And there's a OpenSense and PFSense, while they have some slight differences, are supposed to be compatible with each other in terms of programs. They have the same the same programs will work on them the same way because it's just still the same free BSD underneath. Mm -hmm. um, but he got in that dispute, and then WireGuard was never implemented, and they never didn't implement it until like last year. <laughs> And this is why OpenSense was created, and now you know why. And this is just one of the many reasons, because of how NetGate treats, like PFSense. And plus, NetGate all PFSense also operates in the unhealthy mindset of like, yeah, we'll just freeze updates, and then we'll update your stuff for like a couple months, and then a couple months later, you come back, and they're like, hey, we got an update for like LibreSSL. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> And then it's just kind of just there. Whereas like OpenSense gets updates more regularly, mm -hmm. which, which I do like about it. 
assuming I could connect it to the internet, of course. <laughs> well, that's always a uh, <laughs> good start. <laughs> I've uh, never really taken the time to look into any of this stuff. Like, I... As much as I enjoy messing around with software, messing around with tech, like, this is an area that I've just never touched. Maybe, like, maybe it'd be fun to get into at some point. Um, and if I, you know, actually want to take, you know, privacy and security seriously, maybe I would do that. But, like... I strongly recommend it, especially yeah. if you work from home. It's mm -hmm. a re... Because I work... I, my job is such a way where I am in the office half the week. Yeah. So half the week, it is... I am making use of this. Mm -hmm. like, it, and it's absolutely necessary. The one thing, though, is I read a couple of configs that people have made online for other VPN providers. And what you have to do is you have to make multiple IP addresses. So if one address is bad, and you, it'll pick out of your open VPN config, will pick out of a random batch. So you don't just have one IP. So if that one server is down, then mm -hmm. the whole thing goes down. So you need to just have multiple IPs available. So it's just like one remote IP address command mm -hmm. in the configuration file. Mm, okay. But that's OpenVPN. I'm pretty sure WireGuard won't have this issue because of the way it's actually done. I'm, I could be wrong, though, because WireGuard still technically has direct IP addresses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I didn't actually ask you yet. Uh, usually when I bring someone new and ask them, like, how they got into tech, how they got into Linux, I, I hadn't even hadn't even addressed that yet. Uh, oh, do, sure. do you want to give some like early history about how you sort of sure yeah, um, my with... first computer was like windows 98 mm -hmm. you know from the year 1998 <laughs> but it was the school computer lab in like when i was your age like the school computer lab like computers and we didn't really get to interact with it other than like you know using like word perfect or like microsoft word and you know stuff like that and it never really did i think i did touch one os2 computer but that mm. was like only like once and now i can only watch other people's retro videos about it and pretend i spent more time with it even though there it really is just windows like os2 was really just windows underneath mm -hmm. and you could and there was even a thing where you could ask for a dos prompt in both windows back then and in um that because a lot of games and programs like still required it like i know a lot of um like at the yeah, they still require it would still require DOS programs. We I we had a company that still required a DOS program for their um for their uh, uh, customer management, mm -hmm. but it was um, they run it in command prompt uh, through one of through, through like some weird like PowerShell wrapper that they wrote. <laughs> so you, you know if it works, it works, right? No, don't don't be like these people. <laughs> Although. I'm, I'm having the pains of database management, although it's not like, you know, most people think, oh, you mean like SQL, right? No, it's like, I won't say which one, but mm -hmm. it's like the companies like HubSpot and uh, Salesforce and Blackbot who will just hold like people's, your customer information and like updating customer manifests, but they don't let you access it in any way, like a normal SQL database, even though they're clearly using a SQL database mm -hmm, of some, mm -hmm. or something. And it's really annoying. And then our administrator said it. So like, oh, you don't get access. If you mark a customer as like, oh, they're not a customer anymore. You can't get access to their records anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, why? <laughs> so it's like, because you can't technically delete anybody. You can only archive them away. But if you archive yeah. them, it just hides them from our view so we don't get to see them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really silly. That is, I know that's how it is with Salesforce because Salesforce does do that in some Yo. of their programs. <laughs> that is... That's a system, you know? Yeah, it yeah. is a thing. Uh, so, um, yeah, from... But the, I got yeah. started on Windows 98, and I I did I did just... Have, I, had to for, I had to be forced to, like, go to XP. <laughs> like many other people at the time, I was forced to, like, go to XP. It was just... One, the system... Well, XP was pretty good. Mm. It, it, it had a lot of, like... I, I, I find it funny that, like, a lot of people... Um, at the time when it was out, we were really unhappy with it. Mm -hmm. But like XP was supported for a long time. It went on until like 2012 and or something. It was on for a while. At least Service Pack. I don't remember when Service Pack 3. Was it Service Pack 3? I don't remember how many Service Packs they even got. I'd have to actually look it up. But uh, like Windows XP was around for a long time. It kept or at the very least, I was not. I was being stupid and using it past its end of life, which is also possible. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, there's I, a lot of areas that still use it past the end of life. Because um, I, I, yeah, because I did move to Windows Seven in like 2009. No, not 2009. It was actually like a couple of years after. It would have been like 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. Because it was 2011. Because that is when I got that other computer, which is now just totally fried. It was mm -hmm. an HP ProBook. Okay. HP. It was an HP ProBook of some variety. Um, and that was a computer that I rode for a long time. I pretty much had it till like 2016 ish. And, it, you know, it was just like a basic, you know, you could take it on vacation, yeah. you know, do things with it. It was, you know, when it laptops a were. Computer. It was a functional computer. It had like a weird AMD mobile graphics card. I. Okay, that was the weird time I did, for AMD mobile graphics cards. I, I did try a few games on it, but you really had to like trick the game into like and do all sorts of nonsense to get games to run mm -hmm. like i i did successfully get i was it yeah it was dishonored back when dishonored was new mm -hmm. and you i had to you have to write a r r edit the unreal engine configuration file to like crank the textures way down but i found out when you do that you can't actually change safe numbers because those are textures so you can't see which numbers are on the safe when you flip the dial <laughs> So I was like, uh oh. <laughs> I don't know why you even tried to play that game. Like, that would have been a nightmare on that crippling. system. Yeah, it would have been crippling. It would have run. I, I got FPS. 20, I got 30 frames out of it. So, wow. It was somewhat playable. Yeah. That's impressive. That, I mean, if you can run, like, it ran, I know you did League of Legends, mm -hmm. get Dishonored. I, I got Skyrim on it for like 45 ish frames, but, you know, Skyrim is from, you know, even though it's a 2011 game, it's real. Every Bethesda game is really a game from 2009. Well, <laughs> like, if you want to be more accurate, it's uh, when's the newest re-release of Skyrim? Uh, fuck, last oh, year, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, I actually did do Skyrim modding for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I had. I won't say what I've made. I'm embarrassed by it, to be honest. But I did. Yeah, you... I do know a little bit about the Gamebryo engine's quirks. 2021. Like everything. Everything's an Excel spreadsheet. That's the way to view everything in Gamebryo. Everything yep. is an Excel spreadsheet where you just change values. And if you make new values and attach that to new objects, <clears> then you can add in more stuff, which is <clears> why there's a million mods where people just make, look, I made a custom follower, but what they're really doing is they just duplicated like an entry <clears> in Skyrim.esm of like a, one of the existing followers and then just change their name. Like, right. And like maybe the text, the hair texture, because there's actually a thing where you can flip through presets in what? their mod engine. Yeah, I've never looked into Skyrim modding. I know that things got easier when the creation kit came out, but I don't know what that actually, like, made possible. Yeah, I've only used creation kit, because I never did play any of the... I didn't play any game before New Vegas, so <laughs> I don't actually know. And in New Vegas, I didn't even play. I only got it after release. But then you find out that you're supposed... And I actually did research. You're supposed to buy the GOG version of the game unless you're willing to go to Nexus Mod and download the mod which gives you the four gigabyte aware uh, address awareness patch because the game wasn't four gigabyte address aware but then there's also a problem in skyrim where if you have skyrim skyrim will not register the um will, won't allocate memory correctly mm -hmm. which is why the game will crash very frequently and someone it got so bad someone wrote a custom direct x dll <laughs> where you can just drop it in the game directory and it will fix Skyrim's memory management problems. Not all of them, but mm -hmm. some of them. <laughs> I do not miss the days of awful PC ports because when well, you that's said the sad part, right? Skyrim's not a PC port. It was made for PC. This is a thing that's deceiving yeah, about Bethesda's okay, that's, games. That's fair. Bethesda oper and CD Projekt Red operate under the presumption that when they make something, mm. they make something for, they make it for PC first, which is why Cyberpunk 2077, the Witcher games were all, at least past Witcher 2, were mm -hmm. all, like, incredibly graphically intensive. Like, they okay, all, like, no no computer at the time could run the Witcher the Witcher 2. The Witcher 3 was also, uh, I don't know why people were so surprised by Cyberpunk, because, like, the Witcher 3 was also really buggy at launch. So, like, I don't know why people were really? so shocked. It, yeah, it kind of was. It got, got buried over time, though. But okay. it was in just like CD Pro Cyberpunk. It was just as broken on like PS4 and like Xbox, Xbox One. Mm -hmm. It was like not playable. It was like you would get like 16 frames per second hmm. in certain cutscenes, and it's like, yeah, that's not okay. Because CD Projekt Red only uses PC. However, you say, well, they only make it for PC, right? Obviously, it works well with mouse and keyboard. No, they actually after Witcher Two, something in them snapped. 
and they decided to make everything for a controller, so they only have to design one user interface. <laughs> so the result of this is this Witcher 2, because they planned for an Xbox release. Right. The Xbox release, <laughs> they only have it a con like a console-oriented menu, and even the menu lies to you if you watch like video reviews of the game. Mm -hmm. Like reviews of the game will basically say like the menus lie to you and everything. But The Witcher 3 was like, hey, look, we got everything's in a grid now. That's how you access your inventory. That's great, right? Not if you're an Xbox user, because PlayStation users and PC players get access to a touchpad or a mouse where they can actually click on things. Xbox users don't have access to that. So mm. it's actually a big pain to open menus in the inventory. But really, but it's really just the, the overworld's controls, mm. which are proof that like they only designed this game for like console con console play, but on a PC. It's so confusing. And then like Bethesda's games are the same way. Like Skyrim's interface is designed to be played with a controller, but because Bethesda doesn't know how to adapt anything past like the two, early 2000s, their engine is just permanently stuck in that state, so it's made for Windows first. Mm -hmm. Like that's the reason why, like in some ways, like why it works well on Wine because it was made during the era when Wine, like the golden age of games that work on Wine. <laughs> That actually makes sense. I, but the problem like, is, nothing's going to fix how slow the Skyrim menu is. No, yeah. The That's only enough thing that games. fixes that is getting enough a new games. menu. Had enough games. Mm -hmm. it was, I think it was, I switched to Linux. I'll get back on topic. I switched <laughs> to Linux after, <laughs> was like, topic, wasn't I, I had dodged updating to Windows 8 for a long time. And like an idiot, in 2016, I decided, oh, I'm going to update to Windows 10 because they've nagged me for, like, two, two years now. Maybe I should do it. And then one of my friends actually told me, hey, you should do it. It'll be great. <laughs> I, I, he was such a liar. He actually said that now I, now I don't listen to anything he said because I believe at the same time he also said, No Man's Sky is going to be a great game. You should go buy it. I'm like, <laughs> Well, yeah, it became nope. a good game. Eventually. Did, how long did that take? <laughs> yeah. Don't pre order games. It took like four years. Yeah. 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 For at least to become to become something real. Just don't pre order games. And I believed him. When good. And then Windows, the Windows install failed like, mm. like it does. And, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> and I was expecting it to be like Windows 8. And, you know, when I did get it working, I was like, I, that's when I decided, okay. Maybe I need to start looking for something different. Mm -hmm. And then naturally I start digging around and my internet research says to me, like now you'd think, oh, you should use Ubuntu, right? So I did. I actually burned Ubuntu 1604 okay. in 2016 to a DVD. Yes, a real DVD because I actually have those. So you burn the disc to a DVD because that's what the website implies. The website implies, oh, you need to burn it to a DVD. Oh. Such, the website lie, Ubuntu Canonical's website lies to you. They literally, it, like the implication is you need to use a DVD. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure all of them are like this. Every website, they don't explain this that you need to use a USB drive. Whereas if you visit like Linux Mint's website, they're like USB, just use a US, like USB C or a USB A drive. Just yeah. do it. It'll, it'll be fine. And I did actually download Ubuntu, and then they, then I got really frustrated with Unity, and then I didn't know what to do about oh, it. Oh, that was Unity era, yeah. It was, yeah, and, um, and that was actually the tail end of Unity because I think that year was the year Canonical said they would stop supporting Unity, mm. and that was Unity ended in eighteen oh four. But you want to know what else was a. I learned about Ubuntu, which made me really disconcerted. The freaking Amazon shortcut they used to include in everything. And I think everyone forgets that, but that was like a real thing. There was a, a yep. desktop file in Ubuntu, or at least, you know, the main, the main distro Ubuntu in the GNOME version. Yeah, if Unity you look version. up, um, if, if you go into Google and type in Ubuntu Amazon, it tries to autofill to Ubuntu Amazon spyware. Yeah, do you know why? Are you actually familiar with why? Well, uh, it was I, an article that um, the EFF wrote uh -huh. because I think I don't remember who wrote it, but the article sa says those words, and that was the article that propagated everything around. Right. So I see. So that's because that's how search engines work, right? Once you get the one popular article and you look up a thing, it's going to be the one thing that gets really popular, and and that was back they don't they didn't do it when i started but mm -hmm. it was they implemented a search feature which would send all of your search queries to amazon for some weird reason <laughs> so and the example i think they used in it is if you looked up porn uh -huh. it would you know it would look that up on amazon <laughs> 
So yeah, maybe that wasn't the best and brightest move. So I said, okay, I don't like Unity. I, I want to get out of this. I didn't even know like that Unity was being discontinued. I still have the DVD in the jewel case somewhere, by the oh, way. Oh wow, nice. So I, I might just make that content, but then I have problems. I have to rip it out of the DVD somehow, so or get a drive that actually loads DVDs. Mm -hmm. So that's a different you problem. You can get altogether. a USB a DVD drive fairly cheap. Yeah, but that's so like so much work. Yeah, it's like having like a floppy drive to read my old floppies. Nope, I'm not gonna get that. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. You, you know what caused me to hoard data was I got rid of the VHS player. No, I think it was my parents who got. I was still living with my family, so they got rid of the VHS player. And that like really scarred me. So now I like hoard, I hoard technology like a crazy, a crazy person. So like I still have like old laptops which aren't even functional anymore. I have like one, like one gigabyte Dell notebook from like 2003. I think it ran like was it around Windows Vista? No, it's probably like XP or something, something like that. 2003. It sound probably would have been Vista. When did? Wait, I would have XP. I don't think it was. It probably. I don't think. I don't remember what it was. Give me a second. I have to go look. No, Vista was 2007. Yeah, it could have been. I mean, they were it was such a common practice. I mean, it still is a common practice now. Thankfully, Windows 11 has quelled that. One silver lining of Windows 11 is they've quelled that a little bit mm -hmm. because Microsoft has tried, realized, hey, maybe we should improve our reputation of some of our computers being complete, complete like bricks that can't run anything. <laughs> like, uh, I was thinking of Windows 11. I got a... Um... I got an angry message from my sister the other day. Maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, not because of something I did, because of something Windows did. So she closed her laptop and was like, okay, I'm just, you know, done for the night. When she came back in the morning, Windows 11 was installed. That's right. So was she on... Um... Is she on one of the version, the, the like twenty eight. Was he on twenty two H two when she she left? Because I think they are starting to do that with twenty two H two. They are starting to force installs on people. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or she might be part of one yeah. of their A B tests mm -hmm. where they are starting to test it on. Yes, because this is what Microsoft does. They treat their customer users like guinea pigs, <laughs> so they they test new things on them. So their test in this case was install Windows eleven. <laughs> I I think it's. They, if they installed Windows 11, it's probably the newest, newest one. So it would be Windows 11 22 H2. Because mm, 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 mm. I know 21 on H1, I had to help someone upgrade from 20, 8, 22 H1, 22 H2, I even really though it's literally hate. just like go to the start, go to the update page and click on the thing which says update me to the next version of Windows. <laughs> I, I absolutely hate the way that Microsoft does their version naming. Like, I'm sure there's some. Oh, do you know whose fault? Uh, I could tell you stories about that. You know whose fault that is. Whose fault is it that? It was. People who don't work at Microsoft anymore. That's who it was. Um, uh -huh. The people I was at Balmer was sort of involved, but I think it was, um, uh, was it? Yeah. It was when he was involved at Microsoft, I think Steven Sanofsky, mm -hmm. um, because he's responsible for a lot of things that people hate about Microsoft today, like the Metro tiles in the windows start menu, which were caused by him, by the way, because of windows eight. And then he was also responsible for the graphics upgrade in Windows Vista, which really made people furious and why no one upgraded to Vista. Do you mean error no or something had... different? It was it was just the arrow glass theme was yeah, just too yeah. intense for like just a desktop environment, <laughs> yeah. which is what made people go crazy. And it's like it's a it's and it's also hilarious because this is at the same time like Mac OS, like was it Snow Leopard or Mountain Lion? I forget which one was out at the same time, looked better <laughs> and didn't take up as much memory and resources. Mm -hmm. So it's like it was just a mess. It was just terrible. And the and then he was also responsible for um the the windows as a service release schedule although he was partially responsible for it i don't know if he is he was because after he had left microsoft around 2015 2016 and he's now doing better things in life he's probably ruining other people's eyes people hate him by the way a lot of like the microsoft store is only a thing because of him because of how heavily he pushed it in the windows 8 era mm -hmm. a lot of things in the windows 8 era are because of sanofsky like, like one misunderstanding that I think a lot of Linux users have is like they weren't they don't remember this from the time period is the only reason like people say Microsoft hated open source was because of Sanofsky. Sanofsky was the one to was part of the people in my, the the political party 
sort of within Microsoft, which tried to basically stamp out open source because it what they saw it as rival to their business, even though people were still using Microsoft services and using open source anyway. Mm -hmm. Like that was the the biggest issue with with like that with that group at Microsoft. And also Sanofsky was incredibly hostile towards journalists. Like regardless of whether they, what they said was true or not, it was mm -hmm. how he handled them, which is what real people like really knew. And then like people like Balmer really like Steve Balmer, who was before the CEO before Satya Nadella really liked Sanofsky because of his vision. Mm -hmm. The problem is no one else appreciated what Sanofsky didn't appreciate Sanofsky's vision. Mm -hmm. Sanofsky's vision is like in a perfect world, people would do that. But in reality, no one wants to do that because they just want Windows to just be a thing and just do what they want it to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want to like have like people experiment on it. And like, I'm confident that like the Windows Vista and Windows 8 era were also like the two biggest boons in like Linux. And then like, if people, if, hey, if the Linux community doesn't shape up, they're not going to get the same boon when Windows 11 is forced down people's throats in two years. I don't think Windows 11 is going to be as big of a issue though like i know that it has issues i know it absolutely has issues but i don't it i don't think it's another i don't think it's another vista with arrow i don't think it's another windows 8 with uh with metro it's just windows 10 but a bit worse and I don't know if that's going to cause anywhere near I, as much of like a I don't push think, towards Linux. Here, here, you want to hear my spicy hot take? Okay, I don't sure. agree with that. Because, though, yeah, it's gotten worse because File Explorer eats up more memory than it needs to because yep. now you can open tabs. Ooh, even though every other operating system could open tabs in their GUI file managers. Yeah, what a joke. Uh, or like, oh, look, Notepad now has tabs. Okay, <laughs> so does every other text editor on like every other operating system. But we have it now. But like... But they have it now, sure, great, whatever, on, like, a program that no one's going to use. Mm -hmm. Yep, great. But one of the things that Windows 11 does mm -hmm. is they have, like, they've actually fixed a lot of the conventional security problems with Windows, at least mm -hmm. in terms of, like, what happens with secure boot. Like, secured core PCs, which are now going, which are now being rolled out to market, they started being rolled out last year. Which Linux people now are terrified of because they have no idea what they are. Well, yeah, of course. But, like, you... Like all the Linux users out there who like don't un who like you need to use secure boot. You're not using secure boot. You're just huffing copium. You need to just grow grow a pair and get secure boot working and UEFI working on your system. Especially if you use Ubuntu or Fedora, you have no excuse because it's supported by default. Mm -hmm. Because Canonical and Red Hat cough up money to make their stuff work on these systems. And if you, if you use Ventoy, I think Ventoy even installs a a custom secure boot key. I haven't actually figured that out yet. There's a there's a poorly a poorly translated page on their website which describes on how to in, how to enroll a enroll a key into uh, so you can get secure boot working through Ventoy. Because mm -hmm. I know that's a big boon for people. Is if you install yeah that basically you need to use secure boot because right now in terms of boot window like linux users have just been using not secure have just been using efi boot or like turning off secure boot me included because it's worse if you're like me you have the nvidia driver mm. you're going to suffer more because the nvidia driver is completely terrible like there's a reason why linus flipped them the finger and the and like wl roots like refuses to support it it's because like <laughs> it's awful <laughs> <laughs> like and it's because it also breaks secure boot even if it works yeah yep. if you have intel or amd like it'll still break secure boot so because the driver isn't signed mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you use mok util and sign the driver and i think kmod sign or whatever to sign the driver it'll work you know then it will work but you have to re-sign it every time you install it i think mm, okay if i'm reading what i'm reading correctly this is actually going this is actually a longer journey for me <laughs> But I actually have a couple of test computers I can actually do this with because I do have another computer with an NVIDIA graphics card, which I can test this with. Well, I'll, considering that's your take on Secure Boot, I want to know what you think about the people who are adamant about only using really old ThinkPads that only support BIOS. And, uh, well, it's you even know, worse. Well, they don't get Intel firmware updates. That's well, the no, other, that's they the other also problem. refuse to install microcode updates. 
yeah, there, those people. Yeah, we need to stop the Linux Libre meme. It needs to end. Like the Linux Libre <laughs> meme, what they do is they they're like, oh well, the things like Spectre and Meltdown. Oh, that doesn't exist because we just deleted the source code that like adds in those patches, or the little things like. Oh well, this is just one little proprietary blob from some one random company. Let's just get rid of this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why? Why are you doing this? There's literally no point to doing this. Just use the normal kernel. It's less work and it's more secure. <laughs> but they just remove security patches because it's like, but it's proprietary. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. And like it's finally like Debian is now coming to its senses and like allowing like non-free firmware. Because like the Intel Intel wouldn't be getting like certain media driver updates if you didn't enable non-free firmware, mm -hmm. and it's like, or like you know people getting Wi-Fi working properly. That's a really big one. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and even if you do get Bluetooth working, it doesn't even work. <laughs> like that's been my experience at least. Yeah, I. But my computer doesn't even have Bluetooth. I didn't. Now it's not because of a security thing. It was mm -hmm. just out of laziness. It doesn't even have Wi-Fi. <laughs> Again, I just cheaped out on the motherboard. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't because of some security thing or anything. I just didn't do it. I mean, the real thing you could do is if you just go into like system D or whatever your init system is mm -hmm. and like prevent Bluetooth from running, that's honestly sufficient to like, cause then it can't just, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Cause like, what are they going to do? Gain root privileges? Oh, then they're, then you've already lost. <laughs> like <laughs> if they got root privileges, I don't think I'd give a shit about your Bluetooth. Right. <laughs> So I don't have Wi-Fi on this desktop. The way I do it is I have a um, I have a 10 meter Ethernet cable that runs along my ceiling and comes down to my PC. Mm, mine runs behind a sofa, so I guess we're in the same boot. <laughs> it used to run along the floor, and then I was like, "Wait, this is a tripping hazard. Maybe I shouldn't do it like this." Well, that's why I put it around the around the around the wall. <laughs> So you can't trip on it. No, mine was just in the hallway. Like <laughs> you were just oh. it's just there. Oh, okay. uh, now it's like uh what do you call it? like hooked up. They've got like little nail in hooks that are like along the skirting board. The Yeah. Yeah, whatever. And it's uh it looks horrible. Uh I could like sleeve the cable or whatever, but no, I'm not gonna do that. It's too much effort. It it's fine, it it works. Everyone who comes around is like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, don't think about it. Just don't look at it. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah, basically, suck it up and get secure your boots, Linux users. That, mm. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Well, okay, I don't use secure boot either, but I just don't want to set it up on Arch. Like, that's too much work. Oh, here's a good question for you. Mm. Let me give you the, the Linux security crash course. All right. Okay, Let's, sure. Let me give you the questions. I know it's been a long time since you've probably installed Arch Linux since your hard drive failed. Was that your, since your hard drive failure? Uh, or was that was my home that? drive that failed. Um, oh, it was I, just a home drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use separate drives for them. Okay, but when was the last time you installed Arch Linux? Because this is also relevant to the questions we're going to ask you. Probably when I built Like, it. for your system. Like, when did you last install it? Probably like, two years ago. Two years ago? Well, that's actually fairly recent, then. Okay. So you said you don't have secure boot. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. that was one question. Mm -hmm. um, do you have encrypted uh, LVM? <laughs> this is going to go very badly, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Yeah? Do you have encrypted LVM? <laughs> Uh, I think Luke Smith did a video on it recently. Did he? Does uh, Luke do Luke yeah, videos did. still? He's been doing daily uploads for some weird Has reason. Has he? He's not even in, yeah. my, in my suggested videos anymore. I have some hot takes about Luke Smith, but I want to save that for some other okay. time. Okay. I prefer not to say them here. Uh, huh. He, he does the one. Uh, no. Yeah. no. And I, his is actually... It's, it is what you should do. It's sure. pretty simple. Maybe I'll go watch it. Um, but yeah, uh, you should have your answer. No. Yeah. Next question. Uh, I'll take that as a no. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did you also? All right. So here's another one. Do you use which Linux kernel do you use in Arch Linux? I use the main kernel I ship. I also have the LTS just Linux kernel. Linux. Yeah, 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 I have the LTS kernel installed as well, just in case something goes wrong. Okay. Uh, well, there is a kernel, a special kernel in Arch Linux, which doesn't exist in other distros, mm -hmm. called uh, Linux Hardened. Yes, yes, it and does. if you want to use that one, uh, I've actually, when I was using Arch, you can't actually game with that kernel, mm -hmm. and uh, it, you know, you won't experience any problems because what the Linux Hardened kernel does is, is it removes a lot of unnecessary logging and security calls. Mm to prevent other processes from calling those logs and processes. Mm -hmm. So 
like most people will not notice a thing like using the Linux hardened kernel. Um, although technically there are people who will say like, it gives me a speed decrease because I want to use my Linux Zen kernel or whatever. Although it's funny, I never did get the Linux Zen kernel working ever, despite my attempts to do it. For some reason, it disables my internet when I do it. So I don't know why. It must be like an Asus thing. Okay. I'm half confident it's an Asus thing. I know the hardened kernel does have, I think it causes Skype to not work. We also shouldn't be using Skype. There's like a couple of little random things like that that Harden has issues with. Um, oh, but who uses Skype in? Yeah, well, the year 2023. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty. Microsoft is even trying to get rid of Skype. You shouldn't be using it. Uh, it's like yeah. saying, "Oh, I use Google Hangouts in 2023." Yeah, don't be like those people. Just use if you're gonna if you're in that boat and you still want to be in the Google ecosystem, just use Google Meet. It's not hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 it's honestly better than using Hangouts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all right, let me let's move on. Okay, Next so we're question: at 0 .0. Do you so use far. a mandatory access system? Mandatory access system, like App Armor, SE oh, Linux. Uh, outside of well, flat packs, no, no. App Armor, flat packs don't require App Armor Do they because not? they use OS Tree. Yeah. Okay. Because well, flat pack, it does everything through OS Tree and they... Bubble Wrap, and that you probably have those installed already. Yeah. So. Because when you install flat pack, they will just install OS Tree on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So we're at four, four, four zeros. Yep. Okay. Um. So. Let me try to think what some of the other stuff is. Uh, miscellane I was about to say miscellaneous kernel hardening, but I would save that to the end. I'll assume most people don't even do that. Mm -hmm. Even I haven't done it on my current system. I did do it on my laptop. I did not do it on my current system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's you need to install the kernel hardening mechanisms from, of all Linux distributions, the Hunix GitHub page. And you actually can install their sysctl harden. It's their sysctl systemd. I think they also, they also have one for... Um, uh, the Linux kernel too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have some special patches for those. Although I believe that they will cause issues with gaming, but if you edit one flag and the system D one, mm -hmm. it will not affect gaming at all. See, this so one... technically it won't cover that one, but it does cause unexpected hiccups in games. This is why I generally uh, stay in my lane and don't talk about security. Cause you shouldn't take any of my advice for security. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, what about a ZRAM? Do you use ZRAM or do you have a... Did you, if you use ZRAM, then you don't need to worry about encrypted LVM. Because <laughs> I think Arch does ZRAM by in their installer, in Arch install, or do they do it in... Um, uh, I think I feel like they might wiki. in Arch install. When I set up Arch, I set it up manually, though. Right. Uh, <laughs> you're not sounding very impressed. It's, I'm just saying, it's like, this is doesn't surprise me, and I'm pretty sure most other people are in this boat. I'll I say am, I'm in the boat. I am like, a typical Arch Linux things. user who goes through the install guide that goes over nothing about hardening your Any system. Any of this, right. Yeah. That's the, this, and this is the, this undercover, this is like a big problem with a lot of Linux distros. They mm -hmm. don't tell people to do these things like even Ubuntu will give you app armor, mm -hmm. but they won't install any of the profiles. They won't like enable any of app their built-in app armor profiles, which are pretty sane, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like I've used them on server. They're very stable. Like you won't encounter any issues at all. Mm -hmm. Like you're mm -hmm. like Nginx and Apache will run fine. Okay. You don't have to, that's all I, all right. Ah, that's all I ask for. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. get my stuff to run and it runs fine. And it's like, you need to be using mandatory access control. And if you use Red Hat systems, you're going to be forced into using SE Linux anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and the problem with SE Linux, I mean, it's just like App Armor, there's pros and cons of both. And the problem with App Armor is you need to configure everything. Mm -hmm. But the problem with SE Linux is they just make the global assumption, oh, you don't have to configure anything. But then everyone just gets upset with it and turns it off, which is most like people that I've met in real life who run like home servers on like re on like CentOS or like Alma Linux or something, they mm -hmm. just get frustrated and they turn off SE Linux <laughs> because they're like, hey, I'm trying to do this one thing and SE Linux won't let me do it. So they turn it off and it's like, that's absolutely the wrong approach to do because you can whitelist stuff in SE Linux. Mm -hmm. There's a GUI tool in Fedora which lets you whitelist stuff in SE Linux. Um, now I never know what to actually make of the warnings, although some of the, sometimes it gives me weird stuff. Like even though I uninstalled Snap from my computer, it'll occasionally give me warnings saying like Snap is trying to access your etc directory. I'm like, but if it was, 
it should just be allowed to, shouldn't it? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, the other problem with Snap too is like it requires app armor. So if you're on a Red Hat based system, don't even bother <laughs> unless you have like some sort of obscure application that you can only get through Snap. And right now, only application I can think of that fulfills that for me, like is like FF Send. But even mm -hmm. FF Send, you can use in a web browser, <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. It's just a it's just a command line front end for what would be done in a web browser. <laughs> What is the Android? Is it Anbox that that works best in a Snap? Snap. Oh yeah. Here's the funny thing about that too. Well, Anbox. Anbox. Mm. No, it is Anbox. It is Anbox. Anbox doesn't work on non-Ubuntu based distributions because they only made it for Ubuntu because that's mm. all they tested on. They tested on a Snap on Ubuntu. So if you use it on Fedora, it doesn't work at all. And I think I also tried it on Arch and it doesn't work at all. So like, yeah, and this is before WageRoid was a thing when I mm. tested this. So like, you're just out of luck. Because <laughs> like, WageRoid wasn't invented yet. This is yeah. before all the advances in like Linux mobile computing were created. I'm surprised and that's it, taken so long, to be honest. But like even using Anbox or WageRoid mm -hmm. is just not sufficient because they're not running an up-to-date version of Android. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure WageRoid still runs like Android 9 or 10, right? Anbox is even worse because it's like Android 8 or 9. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um it's just not usable and like it, it, you can't you can't use these things on your computer it's like asking for trouble the uh i i think the only thing that's made android support good on on windows is how many people want to play like random mobile games like blue stacks is incredible blue stacks mm -hmm. is exactly what you need but no one gives a shit on linux even though it should theoretically be easier on Linux. Well, you want to hear my spicy hot take? Mm, it's just sure. don't even bother. Don't give up. If you're going to be doing <laughs> this thing, just get a phone. Yeah, that's fair. It's 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 like, just don't bother. It's like you're literally playing on an inferior system. It's like, it's like those people who say, oh, I'm gaming on a, on a virtual machine, but on integrated graphics and a virtual machine. It's like, don't be like those what? people. Wait, there, those... Wait, what? I'm just kidding. Those people don't exist. I was gonna because say because the only I'm no, I'm I'm probably not kidding because I'm pretty sure there's gonna be someone who says, "Oh, I I game on integrated graphics in a virtual machine of virtual cores," like, but like there are because most people don't know how to use like all these virtual machine GPU pass through commands. I I don't even know how to do any of mm -hmm. that. Go watch Mudahar's video. He will tell you. Mudahar, even Mudahar, I did watch his videos, by the way. Did, mm. did Jack Diddly squat to help you at all? Because not not only that, his video was also you have to use nested hyper virtualization in Hyper V to play Valorant, but with nested virtualization, he doesn't even describe at all on how to set that up. <laughs> he only gives you the flags of how to set up your Windows virtual machine in KVM. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. So, and now you start to see why, like. I'm, I'm more critical of people on YouTube because it's like, they'll tell you all of these great things, but then they don't explain to you how they're doing all of these things. And I'm not saying that like most Linux channels don't fall into this pitfall, but it's a lot of more of the mainstream tech channels, which fall mm -hmm. into this where like my favorite, I'll throw him under the bus. Cause I've thrown him under the bus before Linus tech tips, <laughs> Linus tech tips has this nasty habit of, he just says like, Oh, well, here's this cool thing I did with my work server or my home lab or whatever. But then he doesn't show you the process of doing any of it. It just happens off camera. And then all of a sudden, everything is now magically set up. And it's like, why? Because a lot of the stuff is being do done by his employees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured. See, at least with Linus Tech Tips, he has the, he might be stupid, but he had the foresight to hire people who knew how to do it. Like, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Like, and I'm glad he's able to do that because not many people are, he won't admit, he'll, he'll probably admit it, like, if you ask him, but, mm -hmm. like, not many people have the, like, you know, the humility, that's the right word, to to say, like, I don't know something, yeah, but, yeah. I'll, I, I, but I know I can pay my employees to figure it out for me, mm -hmm. and I know he's the exception, not the norm, like, like, I'm glad he's in the state that he is. I've, uh, I've, I've certainly theater, seen but... some of your videos where you include a, uh, a montage of other tech YouTubers saying things about Apple products, oh, especially. Um, it's, it's really dumb. I hear so much dumb stuff on the internet. You have no idea. Like there, there's a lot of stuff which I just don't agree with. Like mm -hmm. before, I'll I'll, I'll tackle LastPass because that was the most recent video I've done about right. this. Which 
My, I, think I actually made a lot. Time. <laughs> so I made a video about migrating from LastPass to Bitwarden like three years ago. Had nothing to do with the uh, vulnerability. Right. I just wanted yep. to like go and migrate. Well, that was over. if it was three years ago, that would have been the first that other vulnerability. Or maybe it was, was close to. It was ago. between <laughs> two vulnerabilities. It had nothing to do with one of them. I just wanted to go and migrate over. Um, mm -hmm. And then that happened, and people were like, "Oh my god, thank you." I, I desperately wanted to know how to do this. That video just, like, shot up in views. Yeah, but LastPass's vulnerability wasn't even that awful. Like, it was literally just, like, if someone gains access, if you click on a website, mm -hmm. and it can fill out a field and gain access to a specific website mm -hmm. if because of LastPass's autocomplete. Like, that's not that big of a deal. Like, there are worse things to, like, get upset about. Like, what's happening with LastPass now is because the databases themselves were stolen, and some of the older databases were encrypted using, an, I forget which hash, but they were encrypted with a bad hash. Mm -hmm. So if they can, the hackers could potentially decrypt anything with those hashes. But it's funny, I don't think anyone has actually found evidence of those databases being sold on the wild or anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's actually happening. I know happening. there was talks about maybe possibly someone had encryption keys. I don't know if that was even true or that was just a rumor that was spreading around. That sounds like a rumor. I don't think that was actually true. <laughs> I prefer not to actually just do rumors. Mm -hmm. But, like, there were a bunch of people who said, like, last... Like, I'll throw tech lore under the bus because I did in that video. Mm -hmm. He said that, like, oh, you, you, LastPass wasn't secure... Was, has it had multiple incidents. But it's like, if you actually looked into the incidents, they handled the incidents pretty well. Mm -hmm. Where LastPass screwed up was the pricing on their application is awful it's like you can only use one device on it and that only happened after their ceo got like that's got, like, why i left. left yeah when they changed the Cause pricing in because that happened like one year after log me and bought them out mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. now they're go to except now go to doesn't own them anymore because they're not owned by some venture equity capitalist fund mm -hmm. yeah that's some did i say capitalist i mean capital <laughs> Venture capital equity fund. Or Slip something. of the tongue. It's basically something. the same thing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, like, this, yeah, it, it's like I hate hearing stuff like this online. Mm -hmm. It's like there are some people on YouTube who make me really angry. Like, there are some people on Linux YouTube, when I hear stuff come out of their mouth, I get really angry. Mm -hmm. Like, I've resisted making videos about them too. Like, I'm not going to say who, but like, I've heard some things that are. Well, you already other. mentioned My Luke. Luke, yeah, Luke, he has this thing where, like, Say what you will about it. I, I, I want to. I'll bring it up in a future video sometime. But mm -hmm. like, Luke has this thing where like he people are upset that like he's doing political stuff. And it's like, guys, it's his channel. He can do whatever the heck he wants. But the other problem with Luke is like, I remember in a couple of one video, I think he said like snaps, flat packs, and app images are a government backdoor. <laughs> like I'm, I'm serious. Like, he said this on like one of his walks in the woods, and it's like that's not acceptable. <laughs> like we can't just people wouldn't let that fly if it came out of the mouth of someone else. But like people let it fly when he said it off the top, off the cuff in like a walk in the woods. <laughs> I remember when he said that he just didn't even know they existed until like that week or something. So, but the other problem is <sighs> like with like you know Manjaro, mm -hmm. you know Manjaro. <laughs> I don't need I say anymore. Like mm -hmm. I think you, I think, and I think even he rescinded it, his thing after like Manjaro just being just terrible. <laughs> you know, being Manjaro, being Manjaro. <laughs> I gave Manjaro a fair chance a long time ago, uh, but then I realized, oh, you could just bump up the trees, and mm -hmm. then I'm like, wait, if I'm bumping up the trees, why don't I just use Arch Linux? Like, and then I just stopped and used something else. I, I think people assume that I just genuinely hate Manjaro. I don't hate Manjaro. The problem is, it seems like every other week they just do something that makes no sense. It's like... Yeah, but do you want to know what the other thing they did, they did which mm -hmm. I think like really ruined the reputation of Linux? Mm -hmm. Being the first distro Linus tech tips chose. <laughs> like, oh, that's right. the other... Because Manjaro just chose in their infinite wisdom to ignore everything on the Arch Wiki and said, yeah, let's freeze updates. What a great... Yeah. I that's such a terrible idea. Whoever like that decided... By its, that by itself is, a, is reason enough to not use... Uh, not use... Not use... Uh, not use Manjaro. Like... Yeah, because it's against what the core of Arch Linux is, and they make no changes mm -hmm. to Arch's packages at if all. They, if they wanted to go, like, full Ubuntu with it, where you just take what Debian does and do it again, but differently, fine. But if you're going to have this, like, weird kind of mismatch thing where you like half roll in some updates and just 
just don't. If you want to use a distro based on Arch, use one of the more vanilla distros like Endeavor. I don't, I've not used Endeavor enough to really give a good like comment on it, but like, if I mean, you, you can still do all this hardening stuff on it after sure, you sure. touch it. But I think Endeavor, the issue is with Arch as mm -hmm. a whole is getting like installing keys into secure boot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a nightmare if you are not using the manual install. Right, right. Um, because right. Calamares doesn't have a thing for it, I don't think. Um, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, like when I did it, it was back when Intergos was a thing, and Intergos isn't around anymore. So, like not? No, they're gone. Endeavors is now Intergos, basically, because a lot of their oh. developers went to to Endeavor. <laughs> because and they gave up, and probably rightfully so, because mm -hmm. Intergos's installer was so buggy. I don't know what they did with it, but like it was so but I, I don't blame them for giving up. It was just so buggy. Mm -hmm. um, and I never did use any other Arch derivative because I was just like, I don't want to use any. After Manjaro, I was like, I don't want to use like any of these modified ones. Like, and then especially if you like open Arco Linux, hilarious. Mm -hmm. If you use the boot of Arco Linux, no matter which spin you choose, like if you choose like his i3 spin or his Mate spin or whatever, doesn't matter which one you choose, XFCE is your live boot image. Why? I don't know. Right. But when you install it, then it will give you Mate or whatever. So I don't, don't ask me why. I don't know if that's the case anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, that that is another weird little thing. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's certainly a weird one. I I didn't know about that. I don't think it was like that when I last used it, but I could be wrong. Someone will correct me in the comments, probably. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's the same. That's the same anymore. That was <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was like six years ago. When I okay, did. right, right, right. I so don't think it was the K. Yeah, no, no. When I last used it, I picked the KDE version, and it was KDE. Uh, in that like okay, yeah. So they probably done away off that by now. That seems like some like early distro thing where they weren't really sure how to get things. Yeah, running. they didn't have like all those tiling window manager spins when I tried it. So like, mm -hmm. now they have for some reason they have like twenty four spins of like every desktop environment ever. <laughs> Man, like, most okay. of the uh, most of the tiling window managers just don't need to exist. They're like half of them are the exact same thing. No, you know what? If you don't use Wayland, I'm not using you. That's 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 the end of the story. I gave okay. up on on that a long time ago because. If you look at my older videos, I was using Awesome mm -hmm. WM for a long time. And I was using it for years, but I had stopped because I was like, I was like, okay, I don't want to end up in a boat. I, I, I want to get, I want to get out of the boat because I want to see what the rest of the world's going to be doing. And I figured because of the channel, I'm like, well, I'm doing it for content. And I didn't tell anyone I was doing it for content. So I ended up installing GNOME. And I just, I was also curious because I wanted to see who would react say why are you using gnome mm -hmm. because there's always I've, uh, inevitably there's going to be someone yep. who's just going to yes, ask why are you using gnome and i did get, get some comments like that um this but surprisingly but yeah it was gnome i i had you have to the only thing i really ask out of it is mm -hmm. just give me tiling windows i don't care what you do mm -hmm. otherwise just give me tiling windows and unfortunately the only viable alternative other than random people's projects on GitHub, because frankly, that's what it is. Just random people's projects on yeah. GitHub, which is not enough in my book to like get approval was like, is the pop, the pop shell from system yeah. 76, which you can install if you're on Fedora and Ubuntu, but not arch. <laughs> so then it just complicates. I don't think you can get on arch, but I believe you can get it. If surely it'd be in the AUR. Or it probably is by now. It wasn't like at the time when I thought about it. But I, sure. There's a few distro, major distros that it's not in either. Uh, which is, it is in the AUR now. Yes. Oh, it's in the AUR, but not the main repositories. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the problem that leads into another problem. If you have to resort to using a PPA, a Fedora Coper, or the AUR, well, is oh, there really a point? It's in also using flagged it as out of date since four months ago. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> Because another problem is, even if your distro ships one of these GNOME shell extensions, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, that's nice and all, but it's probably not up to date. Right. Like Fedora ships Material Shell, but because Material all packages are frozen at the start of the new Fedora release, Material Shell hasn't been updated for Fedora 43 or GNOME 43, so mm -hmm. it doesn't work at all. So if you open the extensions menu, it's like, this hasn't been updated for the newest version of GNOME. And I'm like, why should I use it if you can't keep up with GNOME's release cycle? Like, a system 76 or some random maintainer on Fedor and Fedora's packaging people are able to do it. Mm -hmm. How come they can't? Wait, so, so they ship a version that's not compatible with the version of GNOME they have? Yes. Don't ask me why. I don't know why that is. 
I'm sure like someone pledges to fix it or something later. Mm -hmm. But like that's why Freon doesn't work on the current version of GNOME either. Mm -hmm. At least when I had first install installed Fedora 38. Yep, yep, Freon yep. didn't work either. So like, but uh, also like that's part of the reason why they give this buffer period. Mm -hmm. Like you're not supposed to do what I did and just upgrade immediately. You're supposed to wait for like between like versions. Typically, the good practice is like you wait, you jump two numbers rather than one number mm -hmm. so like if you go for let's say when fedora 39 comes out you jump from 37 to 39 that would be right. the best practice because you're still getting the same packages um and see some of the older packages too but they do remove stuff like between 37 and 38 magic wormhole which is a program i did a video on a million years ago was removed oh, magic um but there That's is actually a it's a python program where you can share files using uh, a protocol that was developed by some guy on the Navy who did it in his spare time and is on a Python, a PyCon talk from 2018 where he, where he showed like a really cool file verification, like handshake verification system between the server and the, the two people. And what can be described as only the most simple thing ever. But it, it's so interesting because Linux Mint actually copied mm -hmm. that protocol and made their own GUI fork of it called uh, Warpinator. Mm. And now um, in GNOME Circle, there's a thing called Warp. And it uses, because the Python version hasn't received many updates, mm -hmm. it's now using a Rust version of the of Magic Wormhole. So, I because the like... Python version just what wasn't able to keep up with yep. updates. I feel like I was planning to do a video on this and just never got around to it. Yeah, but uh, Matt, there is a Rust mm. version, yeah. and I can confirm the Rust version does work. The Rust version is pretty pretty usable, and it's the same protocol and handshake underneath. Okay, so, yeah. all the same uh, file file checks are done too. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. if you ever fail, what's interesting is uh, if someone ever touches the file, it will actually give you a warning when you try to download it, which will say like someone may be trying to like intercept your file or something. So okay. it's. Uh, but sometimes they'll just give you that as a false flag. Like sometimes it's a false flag, so you just ignore it. But you just have to reinitiate the download again because something went wrong with the handshake. Yep. So you know you're getting the right file. Mm. But it's only if there's two people involved. Like if it's you and just an automated system, it's not going to work. Right, right. Like there needs to be like you send it to other people. But then the other issue is if this, it's like now you need to have a program installed. And if the Rust version only really works on like Apple and Linux, then what's even the point of <laughs> using it on Windows? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I mean, technically it could work as long as you have Rust installed. I'm pretty sure you can get it. It's not, there's not a cargo package for Magic Wormfall Rust yet, but mm -hmm. um, it is a thing. <laughs> uh, what the heck were we talking about? How do we get uh to Magic Wormfall? Last thing I remember properly was LTT and tech YouTubers, but I feel like it was like 10 minutes ago. I don't oh, know. LTT. Oh, actually, yeah. did you Freaking see... Freaking Manjar it? ruining everyone's lives. Yeah, Ah, sure. yes, there we go. Uh, do you... I don't know if you saw it, but um, recently uh, Linus put out a video about how Windows 8 wasn't that bad. And spent right. a lot of the video talking about the uh the metro layout but there are defenses to the metro layout and i think one of the most common ones at the time i never watched the video so i don't okay. actually know the most common one is the reason why they also chose to do that was because of integration of windows phone yeah which yeah. was yeah which is arguably the big reason why they chose to do it and because <sighs> my favorite guy at microsoft panos panay was back when he was the head of surface was mm -hmm. uh, shilling computers with touch touch screens because that was the new fangled thing at the time yeah was yeah get, get everyone was gonna have one touch yeah everyone's gonna have one unless you're an apple computer it <laughs> still doesn't have one although according to talks from ming shu Kuo, they might include one in the future they are thinking about it okay but they're being held off because of supply chain shortages, like many sure. other things yeah. in Apple's product line. Like they've been held off from the AR headset for supply chain shortages. Mm. So, at least according to him, that's the that's the talk of the town. You've mentioned I've heard you mention the AR headset a couple of times. I hadn't even heard of that until yeah, you mentioned it. There is a big. It's like many of the unicorns in Apple, although mm -hmm. it's not really a unicorn. This is more like. Uh, the UFO of Apple, mm. where like people are know that Apple is planning on making an AR headset, mm -hmm. 
like that they want to sell to people. And if anything is going to murder Facebook's business, it's going to be Apple selling an AR headset. <laughs> yeah, uh, Apple, as much as we can meme on Apple for like, you know, their shitty repair practices, all that stuff. When Apple says they're going to make something, they usually end up making a really good product. Jen, uh, uh, no, I would no, argue they haven't. Disagree? They haven't followed through on that process in the last couple of years. Like Apple's been slowly been getting worse, and you start to notice these trends when you think back to some of the little things. Like for mm -hmm. example, on iOS twelve, back when I when I was one of the first phones I was forced into, they changed it so that now the you know in Android there's the top menu where you can flip down. To yeah. turn off the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you know, maybe like extra yeah, yeah, yeah. things in your system or like the rotation lock. Like on one on I Apple's phones, you used to be able to when you turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, mm -hmm. it'll just turn off. But for some reason, iOS 11 and the move to High Sierra, something happened where now when you do that, mm -hmm. it doesn't turn it off. It only it only disconnects you for 24 hours. <laughs> And it doesn't actually turn it off. The only way to actually turn off the radio is if you go into system settings and manually uncheck the box. Then it will turn it off. But that button will be turned off again when you install an update for some weird reason. So, for oh. example, not okay. when you install an update, it'll turn off airplane mode if you had it on already. It'll turn on your Wi Fi and mm -hmm. will turn on your Bluetooth. For Playing no, for devil's some reason. advocate here, I, I know why they've done this. Besides, you, you can come up with a, uh, plenty of tinfoil reasons, but there is a there is a user reason why they've done this. Most of the time, you don't want to disconnect from Wi-Fi. You don't want to you don't want to turn off your ability to connect to Wi-Fi. You just want to disconnect from a network. So you want to have like a brief period where you're not getting any notifications to your phone. But you want to have it be fairly easy to connect back to a network when you. One to yeah, do I know join how another do that. one. Mm. Go back to the same menu and press the button again. <laughs> no, I'm not saying Which that the way they did it is good. I'm just saying this is their logic. <laughs> it's bad logic, is what it is. <laughs> okay, and I don't think enough. it's because of that. Because when you look at Android, Android doesn't have this problem. Mm -hmm. When you install an update on Android, you install the update over Wi-Fi or cellular. Yes, you can actually do over cellular, which Apple doesn't allow you to do. Because I actually have tested this. And it's because I have never brought my phone to my house because uh -huh. I have an iPhone and I've never brought my phone to my house ever. I've mentioned this in a video. I don't actually use my phone at my house right. because the number that I get, everyone calls me at, including Windward, which is my signal phone number, is all voice over IP. Mm. <laughs> so that way I actually, but the way the convoluted solution I picked was there's an app on Android and iPhone called mm. MySudo and my pseudo used to at the time only work on iPhones. Right. And I'd been locked into that like really early. But my pseudo has this thing where you can transfer your i your identities between phones or share them mm -hmm. by like scanning a QR code. So what you do is you open the QR code and then you take it you what you do is you take a picture of it with, with another it was a, basically my phone and my iPad have only seen each other once. Right. And that's when I connected my pseudo. <laughs> And that was it. So I and I did it all over public Wi-Fi. So yes, I now have a device at my house, which is not connected to to one, I didn't buy it in my name. And I bought it in an Apple store out of state. So there's no link, there's no link there. Uh -huh. And it's also in a, using a throwaway email, which is only used for that Apple ID. So those devices have only seen each other once. And that's basically how I get all of my phone calls and whatnot mm -hmm. at my house about having to actually like use my phone at my house because phones are just tracking devices. That's yeah. People are willingly bringing tracking devices into their homes. We and it's like, now that. if you they have will... an Android phone, it's easier mm -hmm. with this because with Android, oh, mm -hmm. well, it's easier and harder. So for one, if you want to pay my pseudo money with just an Android phone, if you're one, you can't be using stock Android. You need to mm -hmm. be using Graphene OS, right. which they did add in a patch like last year, which does allow my pseudo to work without Google Play services. Mm -hmm. But you can't pay the money if you do that. Right. So if you enable sandbox Google Play services on the Google Play through Graphene OS, not micro G, you have to use sandbox play services or the real Google Play services. You can pay the money using a Google Play Store gift card, but you still have to make a throwaway Google account. Mm -hmm. Now, in defense of 
the throwaway Google account. It's not hard to make a throwaway Google account. Sure. Because I made a throwaway Google account. I mean, I don't know about your country, but I know there's it's harder to make throwaway accounts using unique phone numbers. But with me, it's like my phone number's only been used for my Apple ID. So my, my real phone number, because Apple will extract your real phone number anyway. Mm-hmm. Be, and we know this because one of we knew this already because of if you request your data from Apple, they'll literally put it on your CSV file. Yeah. But we also know this because if you read a paper from Trinity College of the Dublin by Douglas Leaf, if you read that paper, he talks about the data, the IMEI information that's collected from Apple devices is substantially more than Android devices. Mm-hmm. So an Apple, for some reason, will collect your IMEI. And then I believe in Google, you need to have Google Play services if you want to enable eSIM. Mm-hmm. But uh, you need that, that. That's just yet another thing. So like, but like technically Lineage OS and Calyx OS do have eSIM support enabled, even though it gives Google your IMEI, which you think they would remove because it's proprietary mm-hmm. and part of the Google Play frameworks, but they don't. It's still technically in Android. Mm-hmm. Sort of like how Lineage OS will still leak your DNS address your real DNS address to Google because it calls a Google server. Like Graphene OS and Calyx OS actually proxy stuff through their own network Mm -hmm. so they don't see who you are. Right. Every time one of these conversations stops, I have no idea how the hell we get here. Yeah, I I don't either. I just read too much on the internet. Uh, Yeah, I I can can see that. You spend a lot more time than I have uh, focusing on data privacy and data security. Uh, you seem to yeah, take because that's it- what matters more. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't have like a secure or private default, uh-huh. then what's the point? Like, Windows is the best example of this because it's not secure and it's not private, mm-hmm. especially not private because of all of the invasive things Microsoft tries to do to like get your identity. Mm-hmm. Or never mind that that like. Even though everyone's hawking around that report about Windows 11 being spyware, it's like a German government group did research on this, like when Windows 10 first came out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this should not be news to people because if Windows 11 is just a reskin, Windows 10 is no different. People just forgot. That's the, that's the only thing. People just forgot that that was the case. And now it's a bit more, I guess, it's a bit more mainstream to know that Windows is spyware. Um, but one thing I did want to ask you about is what is the, besides the things we've already gone over, like Libre, kernel, and things like that, what are the worst bits of, like, Linux data privacy, data security you hear from people? Oh, that's a good one. This might get me, oh, I've said it on the podcast, on the, to my patrons. You don't have to give any names trouble. of people. Just is, um... Uh, the people who say like you need to use uh, stripped away forks of stuff, and uh, so like the people who are like you mentioned in one video, the deappleified cups, for example, right? Or uh, using yeah, I mentioned um, that term. <laughs> I think the, I or, meant- uh, VS or VS Codium versus yeah, yeah. VS Code. That's a big one. Um, or like degoogled Chromium versus like ungoogled Chromium versus like normal Chromium, mm-hmm. and this is because. Well, one, you can't, there's a reason why on Google Chromium exists because you can't just patch out like the stuff. And it's funny because their patches are still used by mm-hmm. other browsers that aren't able to keep up with those changes. Because I think Brave implements on Google Chromium's patches to mm-hmm. remove Google's telemetry. And Graphene OS also does too. Mm-hmm. And Bromite, when they actually update their stuff, does as well. But um, like the for- these forks of forks is really you're just adding another party to trust. Mm-hmm. And it's not really doing much to help you because now you have to trust all of these other people who are touching this thing. In addition to trusting that company, you can't trust anyway. Mm-hmm. So like the people who are like, well, I don't want to use VS Code because Microsoft is t- collecting telemetry about me. But it's like you can just turn it off in the settings. Mm. <laughs> you just turn it off in the settings because it's open source. You think people would be crying, Walt would be crying like for, from high heaven if like, if you turned it off and if it was still like collecting telemetry and sending it to Microsoft, like, and because it's open source, people would know like immediately, mm-hmm. like it's it, VS codes in a completely different situation from, from Chromium because you can actually turn it off like in the normal install. Yeah. Like you can't do that with Chromium. You have to like write all those silly patches, 
which is why they never compile it in it at all. One thing I will say about Codium is it does make a bunch of... If you don't care about the security part, it does make a bunch of other tweaks that uh, make it a nicer environment. But those are tweaks that you can do in base uh, base Codium if you just grab the configs and just oh, set it up. another one. On the topic of that, another one. Libre mm -hmm. Wolf versus Firefox. Yeah. That's a, that's the mo one of the most common ones I've seen so far. It's like, there's no point in using Libre Wolf mm -hmm. if you watch my dumb video about how to install a Firefox user JS, which I spent way too much time editing with such little, which got me a lot of payoff, mm -hmm. but I edited like crap and it doesn't look good at all. Like, which is why I changed outfits like three times in the video. Like, there's, there, there's, yeah, there's all sorts of little things like that. Mm -hmm. And the you just know how to do that you don't even need to use like use libre wolf it's just a complete joke because mm -hmm. libre wolf also has to catch up with mozilla and if thunderbirds team if you read their recent blog post are just having trouble with keeping up with mozilla <laughs> then we're all doomed <laughs> like like i'm just saying like that's just how fast browsers move like yeah, people yeah, think yeah. it's reasonable to say they can't because it's like they move so quickly. Mm -hmm. Literally, before I hopped on with you, Firefox 110 came out today. Yes. Like, which is the thing. Yeah. Firefox 110, Microsoft Patch Tuesday with three zero days in the toe. Apple zero day exploit in the wild. iOS 16.3 and macOS Ventura, whatever next version <laughs> of macOS Ventura we're on. All were released today at the time of our recording. Jesus. <laughs> So it's all on because it's on Patch Tuesday. That's why technically Apple's was released yesterday, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's still annoying. Mm. And like <clears throat> it's all really this is just how this is just the way the world moves. It's like how Debian releases an update every Friday. It's just that's just how it is. Oh, is that I did I actually didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, if you use North vanilla Debian, you'll find out they just issue an up they just update everything on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's to... no updates for the rest of the week unless it's really bad. Yeah. And then they just send out other updates on Friday. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the, the logic uh, is. I was gonna, I'm too used to the Arch model where things just come out whenever. What is, it is what well, it is. Well, the problem with Arch, the one thing I like about DNF, which you mm -hmm. can't do an Arch, is uh, Pac-Man doesn't let you actually look at what actually changed. So you kind of have to decrypt a little bit of what happens. So like there yeah. is a Python script called arch audit mm -hmm. which does actually cross compare the update versus in your system versus what is in arch's security advisories which mm -hmm. they actually pull from other uh, like security advisories from canonical and susa and red hat yeah. and google um so you can't actually use that but then it's also not helpful of like well what if you need a bug fix that you're waiting on for a while like if you're mm -hmm. like in a situation where i am let's say i could actually update sddm won't let me log out Oh, because Nvidia. I don't know if it's an Nvidia thing, but uh -huh. it is a true of both X11 and Wayland. Five point twenty six dot five of KDE SD SDDM will not let you log out. You'll just get a black screen. So the only way to get out of it is to hard reset your computer. <laughs> you can't even get into a TTY, and I'm not uh, sure what it is. But it's funny because this wouldn't be a criticism if Fedora didn't freeze like their desktops. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> and. You know, I, I know why they do it because they want to have like some illusion of a model, but it's mm -hmm. like when something's as broken as this, I mean, come on, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you, you got to fix it. That's like saying like, if G imagine if GDM didn't let people log out, mm -hmm. like people would be losing their minds. <laughs> but like when SDDM doesn't let you log out, no one cares. <laughs> nope. Because, or at the least Fedora's people don't care because they're more focused on the work on workstation, not the other spins. Yep, the spins yep. are purely community stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. It's hard, man. It's like, yeah. I, someone someone did recommend HyperWM to me, and I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, there's no way I'm getting this installed. HyperWM? <laughs> it's like DWM, but Wayland. It's basically what it is. Oh! Why did I forget? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's spelled weird. Uh, Hyperland, yeah. Um... Yeah, the one reason I eliminated that from my choice of environments too is because WL Roots, WL Roots hates Nvidia, so I can't, I can't actually make use of it. I okay, I really like Hyperland, but this software, I I I don't like that people keep recommending it. It is incredibly beta. Like, it's not ready to be run on a production system. It's doing a lot of really cool stuff. 
but it is changing so quickly. It's having fundamental breaking changes coming out like every couple of days. Stop recommending it. Let it get go through a development cycle. Give it six months or a year, and then we can start pushing it. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a real thing. Like, people just shouldn't be using beta software. I say that as someone who uses the beta version of GIMP because the normal version of GIMP won't even open up for me anymore. Oh. Well, it'll crash on certain my thumbnail files now. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why, but it only happens when you change the color. The warning, the verbose warning is not helpful at all. So reporting mm -hmm. this isn't even helpful. And it seems, and it, when I did look it up, they're already aware and it mm -hmm. will be fixed. So like, whatever, fine. I just up the, I can't even up the thing because I didn't even, I don't even have an account on Gnome's GitLab. But um, yeah, I, <laughs> I tried, okay? Like, I, I tried using the normal one, but, like, the beta one, it's got Wayland support, mm. GTK3, has oh, all sorts of one, these yeah. really nice stuff in it, and it's like, I don't want to go back now. I haven't used the, um, the, the beta version for a while. How is that going? Like, the last one I used it was, like, maybe a year ago. I mean... I didn't, I didn't done too much of it, but it, it seems to run fine. Mm -hmm. I've used it for a while now. I've used it for like a year now, and it's, it's working fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one thing I will note though mm -hmm. is it does cause incompatibilities with, um, with the previous, the current version. If you use any of the features, which only that version of GIMP can do. Right. So, for example, layer grouping. So, if you ah. use any layer groups. No, no, you can't use it with the previous version again because it doesn't support it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's pretty logical. I mean, yeah. You know, one thing that really frustrates me is Krita doesn't support doesn't support Wayland, although I did write find some hack workaround. Because the hack workaround, and it's not consistent because it's some sort of way X Wayland interacts with OpenGL, where if you disable canvas acceleration, it'll make it perform terribly, uh -huh. but it'll still work on wayland I didn't... and if you don't what will happen is the canvas will just freeze oh. and you can still draw stuff but you just can't see it i had no idea that critter had issues on wayland yeah it's because they don't have a native wayland version right no that, i got that what... but i didn't know though i thought it just ran fine through x wayland it does but it doesn't but only if you disable canvas acceleration at some point you can turn it back on and mm. then it won't cause this problem but then you have to repeat the process all over again once you once yeah. You, once you turn it back on. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm not sure what it is. They are aware of it though, and it probably it literally is just just use Wayland. Mm -hmm. Just use Wayland. I mean, like one of the, that was my one of my holdout programs. The other funny one I didn't mention in the video, mm -hmm. DaVinci Resolve will take away your title bars on KDE if you use it on Wayland. <laughs> what? What? Why? <laughs> yeah, no one's reported that one. It, it's it, it can't be because it's proprietary software anyway. Mm -hmm. But it will take away your title bars. Now, it's not a big deal for me because I can just use my keyboard shortcut to close the DaVinci Resolve. But if I was a KDE user using DaVinci Resolve, I'd be upset. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just saw a bug report of it. Uh, so I guess there's a report on the, the KDE Reddit, which is not the place to report it. Um, oh, did someone, did someone just say it? <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, surely this is a bug, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the way KDE is doing it and the so way it interacts. No, not KDE. That the way DaVinci Resolve reacts to mm -hmm. KDE in particular because it doesn't happen with GNOME, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure it's the way their window management works on the Linux version. So, which does receive updates, by the way, mm -hmm. which is what surprises me the most. Mm -hmm. And still, the best color. You know, it's funny because mm -hmm. I've used I use Premiere. I've used Premiere for work, and Premiere is. DaVinci Resolve is 10 times better than Premiere, let me tell you. There's there's so many stupid little things in Premiere. Like, the one bad thing about the DaVinci Resolve is you can't move dockable, you can't make dockable panels or custom mm -hmm. panels. You're stuck with however they have it set up. But the one thing it doesn't do is crash. <laughs> That's all I can ask for. Just don't crash. But the other problem it hasn't have is you don't get portability. Mm -hmm. Like you can take a Premiere project file and bring it anywhere, but you can't do that with DaVinci Resolve. For some reason, they make you export the whole database file when you transfer stuff between computers what yeah this is just a thing they do and um okay the workaround is if you use the cloud version you can just just get it synced automatically yeah but i don't think it's because it was this way before they even started their cloud program mm -hmm. so i'm not sure why but that's just how their system is set up 
That doesn't make any sense. Well, they just assume you're only using one computer. I mean, like, the, and it is still, DaVinci Resolve is still, like, one of the number one editing programs in Hollywood. Mm. DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut are both, like, the, the gold standards of Hollywood. Like, Premiere's used a lot, too, but mm. not as much as Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve. Mm -hmm. I think DaVinci Resolve even copied Final Cut because that's what that cut mode is supposed to be, and I still don't know how to use it, partially just out of ignorance and my stubbornness because I'm like, I only know how to use nonlinear editors. That's all I'm going to do. I I even give it given it fair credence or like i did but it's really cool you can do all sorts of funny stuff mm -hmm. i uploaded like raw photos to it because i have some raw photos at my disposal they do work wow raw photos do work so like at least on uh, nikon's proprietary format for raw photos does work mm -hmm. um but there are weird thing, things like svgs don't work ogg doesn't work at all you have to convert on either the proprietary ver either the windows version or the Linux version you have to convert it out okay so like and then the Linux version, unless you pay money, can only do H.264 and it won't do any other codec, aside from the ones that they allow. So like you can still do DNX. You still you, they still won't allow you to export it to though, and it's because yeah. of stupid patent law in the U.S. And it's not even the Linux Linux's fault. It's mm -hmm. like it's like patents fault mm -hmm. because of how MP4s are. Because Microsoft and Apple cough up bucket loads of money to this random company in Colorado that squats the patent for MP4 in H.264 encoding and decoding. Uh, we've, I've talked plenty about H.264. Fedora did nothing wrong. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Th they, this is what, this is the price of living in alleged freedom land. They, they did, they did nothing wrong, but also no one cared. I, I'm just telling you that they did. That's the price of living in alleged freedom land. Yeah, no, I like, I get it. Like when I you're get a U.S., it. the reason why Sousa doesn't have to listen to any of this is because they're in Germany, and Germany doesn't have to listen to U.S. patent law. Like, I think Sousa actually did follow suit, though. Sousa did, but probably because of philosophical reasons, because they had done that traditionally. Because in order to get H.264 to work on Sousa, you need to install Pac-Man, not that Pac-Man, but Pac-Man with a K, because that's how you install proprietary support for right. media drivers on SUSE. Right, right. Or proprietary driver anything on SUSE. You have to use Pac-Man. Mm, mm -hmm. um, I didn't even use SUSE long term. I did use it for a couple months on a spare computer and I enjoyed it, but it doesn't run my VPN software properly, so I can't use it. But that's it. If you didn't use my crummy VPN software, you could you could use it and just mm. be fine. Like, I think SUSE is great. The only problem is, again, it doesn't do a secure boot by default because right. SUSE doesn't cop up money to Microsoft. So that's one thing. But you can still sign your own thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just annoying. And also, NVIDIA has been a little weird when, mm -hmm. I, when I did it on SUSE. And they're, and Zipper is a little weird, especially depending on how you installed it to begin with. Because mm -hmm. if you use Tumbleweed, you, Tumbleweed, which you should be if you're using Leap. I don't know why you're using Leap. But if you use Tumbleweed, Zipper you have to like, depending on how you set up your system, like you have to manually set up everything through their installer and that's what you're supposed to do. But if you change your mind at any point, you're now going to have packages which will perpetually reinstall unless you like lock them. <laughs> and that's at least all I figured out so far. Um, that's cause that's just how it is with Tumbleweed. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's the case with the normal SUSE, but I'm pretty sure normal SUSE was the same because I did test it on a couple years ago and that was what they still do. I'm not sure if I'm even doing it right. I don't even know if that's what you're supposed to do, but I'll I'll figure it out. But I, like one thing SUSE does, which mm -hmm. I greatly appreciate, is all of the security controls, unlike a lot of other distros, is there for you in Yast. Like mm -hmm. you can just click a button and it'll just do all of them for you. Unfortunately, some of those buttons, if you know what, if you, I mean, some of them are really obvious. Like will actually lock you out of your system. <laughs> If you're not careful but uh -huh. you like if you, they're really obvious though like it's really stuff like you know oh i'll just delete like sudo from my computer or something you know it's like obvious stuff yep 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 so like if sudo goes the wrong way or whatever that because that was an update a while ago but yeah really it's just you know linux is not great yeah i hate i hate everything <laughs> i hate linux everything. is awful I hate Don't Linux. I hate Windows. I hate. I have no horse in the race. I think everyone has equated me to being a Linux channel, but I have no horse in the race. Mm -hmm. If Linux were to disappear tomorrow, I would just say, "Oh, I'll just, I'll just go to Mac then." Great, mm -hmm. bye. And that'll be the end of that. Well, or 
Uh, speaking of uh, Linux, though, and you did mention you're using NVIDIA. I did want to know what your experience has been over on the Wayland side. No, oh, clean. Clean? <laughs> Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. But I also don't have all of the new features that a lot of other people want. Right. Like, I don't have a high DPI monitor. I still use a monitor mm. from, like, 2007. Yep, yep. Uh, and it works great. My newest monitor is Resolution? 2014. What are, we, what are you working uh, with? 9, 1080p. Okay, so it's still 1080p. Okay, cool. It still has DVI, but it does okay. uh, It does also have HDMI. It was starting to get out at that point. But my other monitor from 2014, funnily enough, doesn't have HDMI. It only has uh, DVI and VGA, I think. Right. There was a weird period there where HDMI just vanished off monitors. But yeah, Wayland's been great. You know, mm. there's literally nothing. You won't. Ex you, I don't notice anything. All the games I played work just fine. All of the programs I've used work just fine. Mostly, mm. the only exception would be a program I am not allowed to talk about on YouTube, which lets you, you view YouTube videos through an electron wrapper. <laughs> um, right. That didn't work on Wayland for a long time, and it was largely because of issues they were having with electron, and it was giving them issues outside of the issues that you know just electron being electron basically mm -hmm. that's why they couldn't do it but now it works went through x wayland and is fine but you know really the game changer for wayland is when chromium is supported on uh, on uh natively on wayland which mm -hmm. it really isn't it well it kind of is kind of isn't it's not it's not like really supported mm -hmm. like and it's funny because like i'm talking to you on this through a chromium based browser yeah and you're not supposed to use Chrome through a flat pack, at least from my reading. Uh -huh. And it's because it does weird flat pack will do weird things which interfere with the permission sandboxing system that Chromium has set up. Right. So you should rely on using a native package instead. Mm -hmm. So if you're using Brave or Chromium or Google Chrome, you need to use the package for your system. But even Google Chrome on Linux has this weird thing where like they don't sign their binary correctly if you try to verify it for some okay. reason. But, you know, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what really a real way to like how to like fix that one, but it does because that doesn't exist with other Chromium based browsers because they just give you a repo. I like Vivaldi or Brave or whatever will give you a repo. And same with Microsoft Edge. I think Edge will also give you a repo. I had no idea that it was signed. Wait, what? I don't remember what it was, but like there was something weird with the Chrome, the way Google distributes their Debian binary, which does weird stuff. Uh -huh. But it's only the Debian one. I'm not sure what it was, and I'm pretty sure it's something with an internal system because I know they use Debian internally, so mm. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I'd never even heard of that happening. That yeah, is... but once Chromium supports it, I think that's the real game changer because that gets Electron like in the in this like fixed that get that's pretty which is real a huge one any type program that uses typescript mm -hmm. which is also which is also nice but that's you know that's scripting whatever that will work anyway it's really just anything that gets displayed mm -hmm. and really it's just dragging everyone kicking and screaming <laughs> that's so, really what all of development is it's just dragging <laughs> people who don't want to update kicking and screaming yep. like especially windows but like linux is part almost as guilty in this boat in uh, some some <laughs> Ways. I think in some cases Linux might be worse. Like, is sort of like there are some things which are more understandable. Like, mm -hmm. like if you really wanted to make a secure system, you wouldn't be using Open SSL. You'd be using Libre SSL, right? Because there's most people don't take advantage of a lot of the features that are in Open SSL. Realistically, realistically speaking, and there's just been crippling vulnerabilities in Open SSL. And I'm pretty sure it was just made by one random guy. Here in the US, which is a lot of open source programs, but it's the yeah. truth. And Libre SSL was a full rewrite done mm -hmm. by the BSD teams. And they act the free BSD people and they it's much cleaner. Mm -hmm. Like the problem is there's a lot of programs that require open SSL's features mm -hmm. and they don't work correctly. So you mm -hmm. can't really use Libre SSL. But that's more like a minor one. That's like I understand why people don't do it because like there are legitimate features that are in open SSL which are not in Libre SSL. Mm -hmm. It's like system D hatred, you know? Like system D hatred, I'll describe it as like the every all those system D haters are making the wrong points. Mm -hmm. Like the points they should if Oh, there's probably a few when you're, you're watching, you listen to your videos. They absolutely so, are in my comment section. Yes. What they need to actually sell instead is not sell the speed because who cares about some sort of metric because people don't listen to like metrics because people react on emotions. They don't mm -hmm. react on, on metrics. 
<laughs> like that does that's not enough to make well, someone. The thing that the Spain or, one's so the funny dumb. one is that don't rely on crazy conspiracy theories. Like the people who said it's Lenart Pottering's way of getting Red Hat to control. No, my my, my favorite new conspiracy is now System D is a Microsoft project because Lenart works at Microsoft. Yeah, that no, <laughs> that's not true. Lenart only started working last year, so yeah, nope. <laughs> Um, but the real thing they should be selling is the fact that because SystemD is so bloated, it's more secure to use a non-SystemD-based equivalent. Mm -hmm. Like um, OpenRC is the big one because it's supported by, like at least of the major distros that use it, supported in Gen 2, supported in um, Alpine. Yeah, I think Void Linux also has an uh, OpenRC yes. version to there. Yeah. I believe so, yes. Okay. Those are the only ones I can think of. I'm, I'm, I'm I didn't look into like Artix or Devlon, or whatever. Well, they, I'm sure they have do one. This, whole I know Devlon right. has one, but I don't know about Artix. I'm pretty sure Artix is open. But what people should really be, because System D is such a big is part of that monolithic part of Linux yeah, where it is. If you don't need what it offers, mm -hmm. like you can just you don't like just live without it. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason why like it's just. Don't be part of like, like if you want to be the real rebel, it's mm -hmm. don't use like a real Linux rebel. It's don't use system D. And it's like, and that's part of Part of the good reasons to encourage you all not to is because of security. But it's mm. like, you have to also acknowledge that there are programs that literally require it and you cannot like do anything about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I was going to say about the speed thing that I don't, I don't know why anyone makes that argument. Like, it is true, but it's, no, it not, is true. it's not a good, it's um, also stupid. good way to convince people. So, when I, when I boot my system, the system is at the login screen before my monitor turns on. Like, I don't care if it's a couple seconds slower. It doesn't matter at all. Well, if you use encrypted LVM, you will, you'll, you'll experience another password screen anyway. So then well, you don't even yeah. notice. Because Grub or System Deboot has to load in that screen, which lets you type in your password. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, whatever. Well, You're going to be doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the one thing I've never done, mm. probably because I've been too lazy, or I'm I'm just technically inept. There's a lot of things I'm technically inept with that I'll freely admit with computers. Like you say I this, don't know how to have... use I don't know how to use Git at all. Okay. In fact, someone chided me on Mastodon basically saying, Many, uh, I know an eight year old who can use it. I'm like, great, then how come I don't know how to use it? You <laughs> traded all your all of this other knowledge for your security knowledge, which is probably oh. more important than most of the rest of it. Because what do you realistically do of git git clone? That's about it. That's all I know. Yeah. And I do know how to do git commit, but then for some reason the CI pipeline rejects all of my things and says I'm wrong. <laughs> so then they're like, Why did you hop into CI pipelines? I'm like, because this is a real thing people do not some sort of made up fantasy thing like backing everything up to my own personal git server in the cloud mm -hmm. like then it's like it can't even like pull things proper i don't know how to pull things properly and then there's all sorts of branch things it's like how do you figure this out without using the website so then i just resort to using the website every time because i'm like this is pointless and then in fact I'm, there's this one outstanding issue on my GitLab, which is literally on a script on how to rip TikTok videos, uh -huh. but it doesn't work anymore because the Y word which cannot be named needs to be updated for TikTok because they changed the way their API works. Mm -hmm. And there's literally nothing I can do about that. <laughs> like if it wasn't for like TikTok changing their API, it, that wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's all, and it's because of the Android client. They must have done something right. with the Android client to change how videos are being delivered to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but I do have one major Git project in the uh -huh. works. I have tested it on my personal video, on for, and it's actually for content creators. Right. So if you're interested, okay. you can use it. But you do need to get a hold of. Uh, you, I did actually did made a video on it a while ago, but it's an evolution of a script I did in a previous video on um, how to. If you have copyrighted video, you can cut up the video into pieces, uh -huh. and then you scramble it all into one file. Now my original video was i had to do that all manually but now that process is done automatically through mm -hmm. GNU core utils so you can just type in the start time of your what you where your clip starts type in the end time of where your clip starts then give it a name and then the duration of how long you want in between each clip and then it will cut that up automatically and this is all part of the original script the only difference is the part where it merges all the videos together is now done for you huh so this is act, and I have made liberal use of this when I edit videos. So like, if you ever wonder how I choose footage, I actually don't. 
Because what I do is I actually cut up all of the big tech events into million pieces, mm -hmm. cram them all back together into one big video, drag that video into my timeline, and then pick like cl random clips because the random process chose it for me. And people don't even know because they, what people are more distracted by is the actual visual. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the result is like, this is what a lot of movie channels on YouTube have to do to dodge. Like I shouldn't say dodge run YouTube. I mean, uh, understandably respect <laughs> the YouTube content ID system, which mm -hmm. can do no wrong. Absolutely. So what you have to do is also an experimentation. And from what I've seen from other channels is you need to, you can do clips that are less than 10 seconds, mm -hmm. generally speaking, and they will not get detected. But if you do audio, it needs to be like seven seconds. Right. And I have actually abused this and my script actually abuses this because and why I say consecutive clips, that means consecutive uncut footage of a th copyrighted thing. So the example that I used in that video was at the end, I showed five clips from The Dark Knight, which is obviously copyrighted material. Mm -hmm. But because they're all out of sequence, the, co the algorithm detects them all as separate individual clips that are not consecutive. Mm. So you're able to show that many clips without getting in trouble. And this is actually what how my my big tech bingo videos were created. They were created because I'm abused the all of the big tech events are copyrighted. Sure. You will get copyright claimed if you just upload them in their entirety. Although I did find one channel that uploaded the recent Samsung one in its entirety. And I but that was like they don't have any subscribers and I don't even know. So. Right, right. And or they got written permission, which is another thing. If you read that disclaimer at the beginning, if you ask for written permission from the Samsung PR team and they give it to you, then you can do it. <laughs> but um but what you can do is to evade that is you can scramble this clips uh -huh. and then you can upload you scramble the clips of my thing then you can upload it as long as you offer some sort of meaningful commentary on the event itself or something being presented in that part of the event which is why i specified a start time and end time mm -hmm. so you can cherry pick a certain part of the event if you're going to talk about only a certain thing mm -hmm. that way when you let your mouth run you can just throw some footage on there and make your video look slightly more professional than it actually is and you can actually see even big youtubers do this they just they just probably play do a little more, uh, make it a little look a little better than I do. Mm -hmm. And you still have to go in and manually edit it because sometimes a script, there'll be a cut in the actual video before your video cuts up the thing. So you have to go in and manually cut out a part where they edit. And Caden Live is not good at this because especially if you use proxy clips, the playback will not do this correctly. And if mm -hmm. you look at my older videos, you'll actually see this is a problem mm -hmm. where like before a video will cut or before I cut, the video itself will cut, but I couldn't see it because of Caden Live's proxy clips. Right. Huh. But if you do Great do program. this, I love it. But another thing is you're protected by the algorithm. You're protected, at least in the US and at least English speaking countries. So mm -hmm. you would be protected under fair dealing in Australia mm -hmm. because especially with the big tech events, because the other reason I chose them is because they're free. It's free admission. That's right. the other big one. Movies are technically you have to pay to get a hold of either a subscription service on like Netflix or on Amazon yeah. or by get buying a DVD. But with the big tech events, it's different. The big tech events, they're not protected at all online. Like mm -hmm. you can literally just download them off of YouTube or you go to directly to their website and rip, or like what I did of Apple and rip the actual M3 U8 stream out of the out of the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And depending and because they're free admission under fair dealing you're not causing them a loss in financial resources because it's an event they released for free. Mm -hmm. And the other portion is if you edit out parts where, because I do edit out stuff that was originally in those videos where that if you cut out parts of the event, you're, they're not getting the full experience of watching the full, the whole right, thing because right, right. I don't show the whole thing. I just only show the most, the most funny or interesting parts. Like if you cut that out, that means you're not getting the experience of watching the full event because that part of the event is missing. So then they can't claim that uh, you're stealing the experience of watching the event because mm -hmm. I'm not stealing the experience of watching the event. And then the other reason is if you edit it, that also adds another layer on top of it. Whereas you're modifying the original footage, but therefore you're transforming it. So it's not the original anymore. Yeah, all the stupid legal stuff you have to do on YouTube. And I feel like a lot of Linux YouTube doesn't understand this, mm -hmm. which is, whereas a lot of, at least out of so far, at least only movie 
YouTube channels and figure this out because they have to. It's part of their like their stick to review movies. You have to edit videos this way. I think especially so, like, um, especially Linux YouTube is kind of like five or six years behind the rest of YouTube. Like I occasionally get these comments being like, why do you have like the face thumbnails? Like guys, this is literally the standard practice now. YouTube. Like what are you talking I actually about? don't do, I've actually avoided that. Like actually showing myself in a thumbnail. No, I've only done it for like twice for mm. like personal videos, but like I've never done it again. I just chose not to. No, that's totally and I, I decided to stop thinking about thumbnails again. I'm just, I'm, just template it this is gonna sound awful i'll tell you right now mm -hmm. i stole my con the my the layout of my thumbnails of all people because he's in trouble now darman <laughs> the famous youtube channel that gets millions and now? millions of views and if you look at his thumbnail my mm -hmm. thumbnails are just a carbon copy of his just slightly different they're not the same because they don't have the same person with like making the weird close up the close weird close up of a person's face making whatever whatever you call drug eyes or whatever. yeah yeah but like, if you look at my thumbnails and compare them to his, it's literally just a carbon copy. I I didn't think about. It. I was like, well, he must be successful, so I must do it too. So I just took a little fusion of his and like, I mixed. Uh, it's a mixture of his thumbnail, the oh, Linux experiment, and uh, some of my own personal little touches. Yeah. So yeah. for example, the backgrounds are almost always like stock wallpapers or. You go to one of those free stock photo websites and just blur it, and then people mm -hmm. don't even know. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, go to Unsplash. Unsplash is great. Uh, unlike Pexels, which requires a login for some dumb reason, mm -hmm. even though if you log in, they'll give it to you for free. Okay, sure. Is it, no, it's not Pexels. It's Pixabay that makes you log in. Ah, what am I yep, saying? Yep. Pixabay is the one that makes you log in. That's stupid. Sure. Wait, if it... What? Um, if they're, what, free, what, what? Why do you... Whatever. What is this? That's no. I'm just confused why they they want you to log in if everything's free. Uh, in order to get the higher resolution one. No, I'm. I, you I'm, still look at it. No, like, I understand that. I'm confused about why they require that. Yeah, I don't know. It's so they can try to get you in the pipeline to get you to pay money. Oh, do they have it's a thing to of, sign up for? Yeah. Okay, that That's, explains because that. you can pay for their premium service to get certain ones. Okay, right. It's like what Unsplash does because you know how they Unsplash or Getty Images watermark certain photos. Same same reason. Right. Okay. Fair enough. No, that makes sense. Huh. Um, I I have an unhealthy knowledge of U.S. copyright law, and it's not even like it's only the copyright law that applies to me, right? In yeah. particular, which is only reason I had I had I, I did heavy research on all this stuff before I actually implemented it. Well, yeah. If like, you're gonna be reacting to to content like that, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Like, and it's. And like, and there are some parts where I'm really sneaky, where like you will you'll notice the video will cut, and it looks like it's a clip from the same part, but mm. it's actually not. I just shifted over the next cut over, mm. and then layered a thing on top of it, so I can just keep talking well, without showing anything else. To be fair, judging by the way that some of the Apple events look, you can just go to the next part, and it's the exact same thing. No, sometimes. Like I saw that the most recent ones. The recent, but, yeah, the most had, like, recent the, ones. The um the m2 pro and the m1 max or whatever it was whatever yeah, it was. that was a i actually didn't have to edit that footage at all that is legit the footage yeah it yeah. was literally just carbon copy same final cut timeline of them like doing the exact same thing it was so bad <laughs> it was like i was i was like shocked at how bad it was um but apparently marquez brownlee said he found the version on the website and there was apparently like 2022 was in the file upload time so it only confirmed to me that i was like oh that just confirmed all of my i know sorry i saw that video like oh that just confirms all of my suspicions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about about this video just being extra footage oh my god the, the craziest one i heard so far is apple's laying people off and shockingly they've refused to lay people off mm -hmm. which is what surprises me the most and i'm i'm I, I it must be some sort of company culture thing that doesn't exist did they the other. do massive hiring over covid though they did not. Yeah, well, that explains it. And I think that's another reason why they didn't. But they've just refused to. They refused mm -hmm. to in 2008, like when, like, even though that was like when they were at their peak, right? You think they would have hired more, mm -hmm. but they didn't. And like, that was, you know, that was like before Steve Jobs died. That's how you know they were at their peak. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in 20, in 2026, was it 2016? No, it was mm -hmm. like one of the other big US recessions was the other reason why. 
they they didn't do it either. And mm. pe- they got backlash for it from investors. They weren't very, pe- investors weren't very happy. They were like, "You need to lay people off to get money," but they they were in it for the long game. Mm. It paid off. Well, on that note, I think we should just end the show. We've gone like fifteen minutes over old normal. Yeah, I know. I feel like we didn't. You know, that was instruction at all. I feel like I barely let you said anything. I'm so no, sorry. No, no. I I think I've talked about three things on my list of topics. It's fine. Um, no, that was good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I, oh, I, I I always enjoy it when it's just chaotic and no idea what's going on. It seems like it's uh you know more enticing. I keep people. You, you know, uh, the my inspiration for a lot of the way my most recent videos have been edited comes from, of all things, of the things I binge watch, Japanese variety shows, <laughs> because uh-huh. Japanese variety shows have a very if you watch them, anyone who's watched them has have some very unique quirks to them. Yeah. So, for example, they hard code all subtitles. <laughs> I know I do a hack work. I do a, tr- a trick workaround, which is it's just embedded subtitles mm-hmm. rather than hard coded subtitles, but it's still functionally the same thing. But with then they also do is you have to just cut every five seconds because that's a thing that Japanese that's what you know it's what American just Americans do too. Mm-hmm. Then there's like British YouTube who doesn't cut at all because it's just it's just why would you do that? It's like reality shows they don't cut at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that Wait, what was I talking about? Uh, sorry, editing talking? Japanese variety shows. Japanese variety shows, yeah. They also have all the same sound effects, which I all I found mm-hmm. an archive of all of those. So now I use all of those now. But then I also mix it up with some other sound effects that I have, which are either I pull from YouTube because I have no imagination, mm-hmm. or they're meme sounds because who doesn't have those? But the other one is, of all places, Ed, Ed, and Eddie because someone uploaded it to Dropbox an entire folder of all of Ed, Ed, and Eddie's sound effects. Oh, and some of them are weird. Like there's like there's like horse braying or like or like chicken, but there's like five chicken sounds. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I've not watched Ed, Ed and Eddie in. Like Someone had to like time. dig really deep into Ed and Eddie because clearly they were cut from the show. Like yeah. you can hear parts of those from those clips, like of like someone's voice. Like you can hear like Ed's voice trailing into one of the clips or something, but like. I do use those. It, it mm-hmm. works. You know, it's not my favorite though. I'm trying to get away from that. <laughs> you, but some uh... of them are nice. Oh, and then mind test, mind tests, um, sounds, <laughs> because the footstep sounds and mind test. Well, not the footstep sounds, but like the sound you make when you break blocks is also uh-huh. one because it's technically royalty free. Because <laughs> it has to be, or else they would get sued by Mojang or Microsoft. Uh huh. So all of those are also Creative Commons too. <laughs> The sound effects and mind test. You've definitely put a lot of thought into into these effects, into copyright law and these effects, haven't you? Oh, and then I also had to make my own text boxes because if you watch a lot of variety shows, mm-hmm. people love text boxes. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just reusing them, and I feel like I need to make new ones, but they don't make new ones, so why should I? <laughs> so, so I never have like renovate. Six. So I have like six text boxes. I just jump around and you should make text boxes it, i should it's make text a, it's a, it's a, I, I did them all in inkscape it's mm-hmm. fun. uh i might consider it um but before we go on another 30 minute tangent um let the people know where they can find you all right i'll share this now this mm-hmm. is actually the first time i'm sharing this you're, you're so special i'll share this wow. right now i will give my email <laughs> This is the, I, this, I've, I promised I would give it, but I'm never. Do not put this in text. That's all I ask for. Do not put this in text anywhere. Okay, I, you can put it. I don't. I'll just say it is hello at my domain name. Okay, if you know what my domain name is, just go to go to my channel. You'll find my domain name. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'll probably share it in a video, but I have to like. I have to do it in such a way where the, even the auto generated subtitles can't see it because we know for a fact bot scraped those, and I'm not even going to be listing this on the page where it's like sign in to view your business inquiry links i'm like or fill out a captcha to do that i'm like yeah. nope i'm not doing that either because clearly there are like scam vpn companies that do that but basically just go to when it's ready go to trafflington.com it's not ready mm-hmm. which is just my name trafflington.com and it is it's funny that domain didn't cost me a lot at all i thought it would have been worse yeah for dot com usually dot coms are relatively expensive yeah it was it was coveted but <laughs> i i got it um yeah it's basically just traffic.com i'm also on mastodon and twitter on twitter i'm less liable to answer you especially because 
freaking Elon. <laughs> Did you know he actually ruined my website when I was oh. testing my website because he privated his account and because I actually embedded two tweets from him, those two pages made so I couldn't compile the website. <laughs> So I hate him even more than I already did. Oh, uh, oh, oh, fun fact about Elon. The um, I don't know if it's been delayed again, but as a recording this, the uh, change to the Twitter API has been delayed twice. So expect a third delay, I guess. What do you mean delayed? Like, uh, so you're not, you're not going through um, it? changing the way that you're uh, killing off the free API, making you pay a ridiculous amount of money to use it. Okay. Right. It's just being delayed well, twice now. I'm surprised. Is this because of the vote that we can't see, or I assume? I the first time was because when uh, the the day it was going to be um, shut off, they broke the website. Uh, like, you literally couldn't tweet unless you scheduled a tweet a minute in the future. Uh, oh. That was a fun time. Okay. But this second delay, I don't know why. Probably because they have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe. The one thing I'm worried about of Twitter is mm. um, when they move away from GraphQL from their requests manifest in Android, mm -hmm. because what that's going to do is that's going to break Knitter, the Twitter front end, that yeah. I used to get RSS feeds of Twitter, and that's going to make me really upset, because mm -hmm. they're going to do it. Elon has promised to do it at some point. It's mm -hmm. going to happen. I'm just going to have to accept I can't get RSS feeds of Twitter anymore. And that's mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's how I get like a lot of like Ross Young, especially because he like posts nothing on his like personal website ever. Mm -hmm. And that has an RSS feed, but not on Twitter. So I'm like, right. like, what's the point then? It's like really just yacht Ross Young because Ming Shukui, you can get his stuff from his Medium page. Like, and then like everyone else I know has moved off because they're just upset. Mm -hmm. They moved off or they had a platform already. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, like you, for example. <laughs> also, you have a YouTube account. Trying to account. give you a, a segue YouTube. here. Trying to give you a segue here. It's like give a, me? What's segue? What? Like, you know, segue to you give your links to where they can find the podcast. Oh, you didn't mention your YouTube channel. Yeah, you have a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm on YouTube and Odyssey. Yeah. But if you go to the website, you can figure that out. It's really okay. just a GitLab uh, markdown document. <laughs> This this episode is such a mess. Anyway, um, podcast, listening to the audio version. The video version is on YouTube at Tech Over T. If you are watching on YouTube, you'll find the RSS feed on, I think, it should be able to just find it somewhere. I don't know. Go to a podcast platform, search Tech Over T. You'll find it. Uh, it's Anchor on. FM. It's on Spotify as well, which you don't have an RSS feed for, which is annoying. But, you know, you'll find it places. It's it's everywhere. Uh, the main channel is Brody Robertson. I do Linux videos there six days a week. And the gaming channel, Brody on Games. Uh, yeah, go have fun with that. Also on Twitch. Same same name. Yeah. Any mirrored, last... Mirrored to YouTube. Hey, You. Mirrored to YouTube. Because you use Restream. Oh, yeah, stream on YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, we stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you have any last words? Or any final That sounds really grim. Do you have any final words for the show? Uh, yes. Uh, I... Why do you have, like, anime girls in the back? Are they naked? I can't even tell. <laughs> no. They look that way. It's probably because of the autofocus. Ah, oh, no, they're, they're probably wearing... bathing suits they're... or something. Yeah, they're wearing bikinis, yeah. Oh, of course. Lovely. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. It is what it is. Anyway, uh, I guess we're good to go. See you guys All later. All right. Bye-bye.